It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Therod is here. Mary Jo Foley has the week up, but we've got a great replacement. Todd Clint of SharePoint fame is here. We'll talk about the latest Windows news, some office news, some uh, blue news, and more. Stay tuned. Windows Weekly is next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Windows Weekly is provided by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therott and Mary Jo Foley. Episode 302, recorded March 7th, 2013. Five Cokes and one Pepsi. Windows Weekly is brought to you by ShareFile.com. Enhance your workflow. Send files of almost any size easily and securely with ShareFile from Citrix. Try ShareFile today for a 30-day free trial. Visit ShareFile.com, click the radio microphone, and enter Windows. And by Rackspace, the open cloud company. At Rackspace, build what you want, where you want, and how you want. All backed by their world-renowned fanatical support. Try it today. Download the open cloud free at rackspace.com slash open. And by audible.com. To download the free audiobook of your choice, go to audible.com slash windows. It's time for Windows Weekly, the show that covers your Windows needs, everything you want to know from that little tiny company up in Redmond, Washington. Speaking of Redmond, Washington, apparently Mary Jo is somewhere nearby. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And they don't have internet access there yet. So yeah, was, we're hoping sometime <laughs> next decade. I was telling so. Paul Thorat, maybe she, if she goes to C Tacoma, Tacoma's known for being very wired. Just go right. Is that up. what it's known for? Yeah, just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's Paul. The, it has the largest concentration of Denny's per capita. I think that's true. <laughs> Wear it with pride. Yep, and the and Waffle Houses. Uh, Paul Therott is here from the uh, super site for Windows, winsupersite.com. He's also, of course, the author of Windows 8 Secrets, which I've been devouring voraciously with a little sriracha on it. It's really good. I, you and, know, I told you earlier, I, I meant to, I thought we were going on a four for some reason, and I have, uh, I have. Do you need to go? I have snow shoveling head. <laughs> have you been shoveling snow? Oh, man. It's, we're having a, an episode today. Oh, I hate it when that happens. Well, thank you for being here. I don't know where you got four. We've only been doing this show at 2 p.m. for the last five years, but no problem. It's it, This is just dementia happening in front of you <laughs> like a slow-moving... Your hair does look grayer. Uh, maybe that's some snow in there. Snow on the yeah. roof, as they say. But he's got a fire down below. Hey, look who this is. Right next to me, Todd Clint is here. Hey, Todd. Hi, Leo. Good to be here. Nice to see you yep. again. So Todd, uh, K-L-I-N-D-T, if you want to go to his website, T-O-D-D, -D -D, K-L-I-N-D-T. And, and, and by, by all means, too. <laughs> and you're uh, the SharePoint guy. You've written how many books on SharePoint? Uh, so I just, thank goodness, turned in the last chapter for my sixth book on SharePoint. Oh, you wouldn't think there'd be that much to say about SharePoint. Uh, the, it, it gets bigger and bigger. So I've been writing them for a few years. They, 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 they squeak out a new version every now and then, and I got to keep up. That's awesome. Yep. Well, it's nice uh, to have you. So you're filling in, uh, you're playing the role of Mary Jo on today's performance. Just happened to be in town, and uh, yeah. You're here for the SharePoint conference? There, Yeah, there was a, a conference, SP TechCon, down in San Francisco, and I was uh, down there. How was that? Great. It was uh, it's great. They, they do it twice a year. Last time, uh, when they did it in Boston, uh, saw Paul uh, went out there. But good good time, little boutique conference all about SharePoint. And uh, and they do they do training there that kind of thing. Yeah, it was, they have all day training, and then I did uh, a bunch of sessions. You know, 75, 90 minute sessions. Oh, neat. Uh, talking about SharePoint, uh, it's a good time. Your vendor halls, that kind of stuff. If you uh, if you're just a home user of Windows, you probably don't have. You probably know the name SharePoint, but you may not know exactly what it's what it's for. It's really a business product. Yeah, yeah, the, uh, yeah. Though every business it seems everywhere has it these days. Uh, and, and, if, and if you've... Uh, what is it? Tell us what it is for those who don't. Oh, Everybody geez, knows. Yeah. But. So, so on, on the surface, it's Microsoft's big collaborative platform. It's uh, you know, sharing documents and you know, pictures of your dog and that kind of stuff. Uh, it's a workflow platform, you know, uh, HR things and all that. Uh, but it's kind of the, the platform Microsoft's made for applications now. It's kind of, you know how, how 10 years ago people wrote stuff to sit on top of IIS? Yeah. Now they're kind of writing things to sit on top of SharePoint. Huh. Is it a server? It is a server. It's a very expensive server. 
Okay. I, I would say worth every penny. And most, yeah, of course you would. <laughs> and most people probably run it, uh, not host, run a hosted or managed server somewhere else, right? Or micro, let Microsoft do it, right? Yeah. Well, and that, now that's the thing. Uh, you guys, you know, have been talking a lot about Office 365, and and with each version of SharePoint, it's gotten great penetration into uh, to big companies. And now, pretty much everybody that's going to buy it's bought it. So right. now, <laughs> right. now, uh, now they got <laughs> now that what? Office 365 thing going. Now they're they're uh, they're, they're weaseling the wind. So so Office 365 is a big thing. And then in uh, full disclosure, my my employer, Rackspace, we also uh, host SharePoint as well. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, you know, and that's that's something. Well, and? I was going to say, there's one note thing that you're having trouble with. Yeah. Um, obviously, it, the version I'm using is hosted in SkyDrive, but it can be hosted in SharePoint as well. And so you could access this yes. from Office 365 instead of from SkyDrive. We were talking about this last week because I bought, as soon as the Office uh, came out, uh, the subscription thing, I bought it. And then... Mm -hmm. They just last week released the for a little bit more the business version yep. with SharePoint, yep. and I thought, boy, I'd like to have that. <laughs> Whatever the hell it is, I'd love to have well, that. I would. It's <laughs> only it's only like four bucks a month more or something like that. So we never did figure. <laughs> I guess I have to cancel <laughs> and yeah, get a refund. I think the way it works is Microsoft will let you cancel it. And they'll refund you what's left on your subscription, and then you have to re-up you know, with the they small do business. Plan. What they do with Windows, you know, I go into Windows and then you can, you know, Windows anytime upgrade, I could just, you know, get more stuff. You you would think they would try harder to make it easy for you to give them money. Yeah. You would think <laughs> there would be a guy whose job that was. The, the you, you don't understand Microsoft, clearly, based on what you just said. <laughs> I just, um, I, I really don't want to. They they'll, they'll get to that. They will get to that. I'll wait then, because I don't want to cancel then re I don't just, just I don't I'm sorry I don't mean to suggest they're going to get to it like this month <laughs> oh I mean at some point in the distant future there right. there almost certainly will be some upgrade that you can click right. a button and go from home to business or something you know I, I'm sure they'll they'll figure it out now uh John uh, Baxter in the chat room is saying that the office versions are priced per user so I don't get the five licenses on the office version so it is not as good a deal for me yeah uh, in that respect, because I'm using three of the five licenses now, and I probably will end up using four or five of the licenses because yeah. I have a number of machines. Mm -hmm. So it seems like maybe I should get one copy. I don't know what I'm going to do. Forget it. I don't want SharePoint. You can install it on five <laughs> it's devices. It's not worth all the trouble I give up. <laughs> Screw it. Uh, going back Never to Never mind, bad. Microsoft. Yeah. SharePoint. Get rid of his microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Passing fast. Disconnect, Todd. Yep. Yep. I'm done. Kill camera three. <laughs> uh, Leo, you can still install oh. it on five devices, though. But you, but I pay f you, with one license with one user license yeah. you can install into five devices. That's Alex Gumpel, our our board op for today. We don't I'm normally sorry. have a board op because we had to wait, move wait, out. That was wait was that Alex? That's yeah. Mr. Gumpel. Oh, I thought that was Ayaz. They have the same voice. Does anyone else notice that? You know what? They look amazingly alike as well. Are they brothers? I think they might be twins. Look at them. I, I, at I, I'm I'm seeing them in the same place at the same time. So yeah, look at yeah. that. Yeah, they. <laughs> But I as, I, as and Alex are kind of our uh, our Windows guys here. Whenever I have a problem, I go running to them. Sure. And, or you. I mean, if you were here, I would run to you, Paul. But, but uh, He's I'm not, shoveling I, I snow. Didn't me. There's that wasn't... too much snow. <laughs> too yeah. much snow in the backyard. I just can't. I left the state. So I live in Iowa. And I just, Is that I, where you live? I left. Yeah. I, I, so I flew out here. I let them deal with that. I'll fly back when they got it cleaned up. <sighs> wow. Yeah. Ray Romano, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Let's move. <laughs> So, Mary Jo, do you know Paul? Now, she's not here. She's not she's listening. Not. So, what's what's she really up to? She, Mary Jo went to the, what is it called? Tech Fest, I think. Oh, the name fun. Of it. The Microsoft Conference. Uh, oh, that this, sounds this fun. All right. Well, she'll come back next week and tell us about it. And maybe she'll have a couple of beers. Yeah. Yeah. Wait a minute. Somebody found a picture of you shoveling snow in our chat room. Okay. Uh, this, uh, I, I feel I feel that this is going to, no, don't, don't show it yet. <laughs> I feel there may be a joke here. <laughs> Yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> I don't because I don't think. Are there pictures of you shoveling snow? I think that that's not the case. Not today. <laughs> it's uh, yeah. I I posted a picture of me shoveling snow on Facebook a few years ago. Oh, well, that's I, probably what it is then. All right. Yeah. Is it a picture of me? Are you looking at it? I don't know. I, I did. I, I fired it up. It is not a picture of Paul. Okay. <laughs> um, is least, it a is it a picture of a large marsupial? It, it, it's, uh, to be. it's safe for uh, safe for work, but uh, oh, that's good. I like it. Can you paste it into the chat room again? Because that's uh, I could use that. I, we can't show uh, Todd's. Uh, and by the yeah. way, for those of you listening at home, tru truthfully, you're you're not missing anything. Yeah, I've got I've got a face for radio. <laughs> my mom my mom tells me that, so that's 
Uh, here we go. Here we go. Let me just, uh, I don't know how this works. How does this Windows thing work? You right-click, oh, open link in browser. That's actually an X-Chat. Oh, man, it's tiny, too. Let's let's make that bigger. Here he is. Uh, there's a, So he's shoveling off the roll. Whoa! Hey, geez, Louise! But but the, the mount was, he nailed the mount. That's, that's He a, did. That's a, that's a solid so, eight. So yeah. this guy is on the roof. There's about four feet of snow on it. He's shoveling, and suddenly there's a landslide. The ladder goes... But he is fine, and now the roof magically is <laughs> clear and as this snow. This is an animated GIF. That's what we call it in the trade, in yeah. the biz. Yeah, it's not even a video; it's actually a animated game. GIF. Huh. Huh. We don't it's, have that much snow. It's amazing what they can do with computers these days. Yeah. So moving right along. By the way, uh, and this is a total coincidence. Mm -hmm. We do have a rack space ad later in the show. So Todd. Is just going to fade away. He's just going to yes. disappear when that happens. It's better to burn out than fade away, Todd. <laughs> <laughs> One of the big stories that I saw, and I was interested, we've been talking a lot about Blue, which is the next version of uh, everything. Yes. Yep. It's all Blue. Uh, but one of the things Microsoft has said is we're not going to wait. Mary Jo actually got this scoop. We're not going to wait yep. till Blue before we update our Metro apps. Maybe even soon, like this month. So Microsoft has never said anything about a blue. I think the, <laughs> the way to say this is that a, a source of Mary Jo's is saying this. And uh, this certainly sounds... Wow, he's all blue. Yeah, what happened there? Paul Blue. I think that that's a little joke on Alex's. <laughs> oh, because we're blue. Very good. Paul's, Paul's Get feeling it? blue. This is when we talk about blue, Paul will turn blue. Okay. <clears throat> Gosh, now everybody really... <laughs> those of you listening to the audio version of the show, really, now you have to download Yeah, it. you really do. It's special effects. I'm really... <laughs> I'm, I'm nervous Video. that we p are putting too much stake in this blue thing, that um, that, that we're sending kind of mixed messages here. You know, that Windows 8 is such a disaster that it needs this humongous fix. No. And that when this fix comes out, it's not going to be nearly as humongous as people think right. it's going to be. So let's start dampening down the expectations now. I, I just I just don't think it's going to be that that huge thing that people uh, think it is. But whatever this thing is, Blue, I look at it as a combination service pack, feature pack, uh, meeting new features plus bug fixes, obviously. I've wondered for many months now, in fact, uh, I guess Windows 8 has been out for about a quarter why they haven't done a better job of just fixing the built-in apps. You know, there's been a few updates here and there. And, of course, there was a big update right before Windows 8 came out. But it seems like these things could be updated fairly continually. So uh, the source of Mary Jo's is saying that there is, in fact, a major update coming for a lot of those built-in apps, uh, presumably meaning Xbox Music and Video, the, you know, the Bing apps that are built in, Mail, Calendar, Messaging, and People, and so forth. So... Um, yeah, the more the merrier and the quicker the better, you know, so we'll see. But Are there are there major issues with any of these? I mean, they, they all seem There were like major issues with all of those. Oh, things, okay. <laughs> so you're, you're being too um, kind. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, you know, you can rattle off a couple of the, the obvious ones. I mean, the Mail app, for example, is not as full-featured as the Mail app on Windows Phone. So one of the things you can't do is link inboxes and have that nice view where all of the email from all of your inboxes are mixed into a single view and letting you manage them all from one place you know the way it is now you have your different accounts you have to click around a lot and it's a little tedious yep. uh, one of the other things that's wrong with the mail app in particular is that it doesn't support drag and drop so if you want to do something with a message like uh, uh, push it into a different folder or select a bunch of messages and push them into a different folder or delete them or whatever uh, lots of extra clicking um, just because even of within design. mail so like I can select a message but I can't I can't, can't drag, drag it, it into a yeah. folder which is nuts it's just really <clears throat> immature. Yeah. yeah. So I discovered another problem with the built-in mails app. I had the uh, the distinct pleasure of moving my mom. I got them a new computer and moving them from Vista to, to Windows 8. Well, that's about time. Yes, yes. And and one of the things <laughs> I discovered is the Windows 8 mail app doesn't support POP3. Oh. oh. And uh, anybody want to guess what the only protocol my, the, the uh, mail yeah, yeah. <laughs> that my mom has used for 15 yeah, yes. years? Only POP3. Only POP3, of course, yes. for her. So uh -huh. this supports, uh, of course, Exchange. Yep. IMAP. Does it support Smoke can I do signals. Gmail? Can I add a I, Gmail account to it? I don't know. Yep. Anything but POP3. I could do Hotmail, Outlook, Google, other account, AOL so if you click or Yahoo. On, by the way, click on other account. It says POP. It says POP. Yeah. You click, you click, but it doesn't work. <laughs> well, I, <laughs> I okay. It gives, gives you a very, uh, you know, stern message not to use POP3. Yeah. Microsoft, oh my God, I can't believe they put a button there. <laughs> I, I clicked the button, and then it says, like, oh, oh, good, it has pop. I'm <laughs> sorry. 
Mail yeah. doesn't support Pod 3 email accounts. To add this account to Mail, ask your email provider mm -hmm. <clears throat> about using IMAP or EAS. Any guess how that went when I asked my mom's email provider about uh, Windows 8 support? We are giving you 10 megabytes of storage yeah. on your email account. I don't know what more you could ask First for. First question he asked was, I'm sorry, what mail client are you using again? <laughs> yep. I've never heard Just of Just Windows 8? Have you heard of that? Yep. <clears throat> wow, that's really... Uh, hmm. Yeah, so they all have problems like that. I think mail is representative of what's wrong with these apps. And, um, yeah, they need to be updated. So, you know, again, mail, I, uh, Pop is a great example of something that uh, why this support couldn't have been added to the mail app at any time in the past four months is unclear to me. But hopefully this uh, update that Mary Jo's talking about that could happen as soon as this month will include that kind of an update. Yeah. Good. Yeah, that's as it should be. You should it'd be crazy to wait for blue, really. Well, they've been waiting a lot, regardless, which yeah. is a little nerve wracking. I, I it don't does feel understand. like these are demo apps that they had planned to update once they shipped the operating yep. system. Yep, it's kind of what it feels like. Uh, at least, uh, yeah. And, and you know, I hadn't played that much with mail, but now that <laughs> I play with it, uh, wow. <laughs> well, okay. And then, I mean, and the, uh, and the alternative, know. though, that's the funny thing. So I have Outlook. But then yeah. I go there and it's like, oh my God, this is way more than I, you know, see, yeah. I, here I am. You got to understand, I'm a refugee from Apple. So <laughs> sure. I'm used to Apple Mail, which is very kind of simple, but it, but easy. And it does all the things I want it to do. And I go to Outlook and that's like way too much. And then yeah. Mail's way too little. There's nothing, I want something just there's right. There's a lot of, there's a lot, it's, there's no just right email on Windows, Leo. It's, uh, we have. <laughs> I've I'll tried look, Pegasus, look, which is the bat. All sorts of weird third-party yeah. email Pine. programs. Yeah, my, yeah. I, I personally, Pine's I fabulous. But of all of them, I like the Outlook.com web interface. I actually think that I do like really Outlook.com. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so and another thing with this mail, you know, Windows RT has the same issue. The mail client in Windows RT is the the one thing everybody complains about uh, because of of the problems. But folks that have Windows Phone eight have a great mail client. Yeah. So, so somebody in Redmond, with even without yeah. the internet access, has one. figured out how to write a great mail yeah. client. They're well, just and, not sharing. <laughs> Yeah. How is it that they didn't port those apps? I mean, why, why wouldn't you have started with that? Exactly. You know, and that's the frustration. Let's take this app and we'll modify it to work on a bigger screen. Yep. You know, yeah. yep. um, not a very difficult concept, but not what they did. So, should I use Thunderbird? Didn't haven't they discontinued? No, no, do not use that. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> so, no, no. Chat room is going. Oh, I love Thunderbird. Love Thunderbird. But and uh, and I've used Thunderbird uh, uh, before, but I haven't used it in a while. No. Um, why well, not? What account? What accounts do you have? What What are your accounts? Well, if I if it, if I could hook it up to Gmail, I'm fine. I think that's what I'll probably do is hook uh, Microsoft's. But why not just use? I'll uh, use mail. Know, use the, just why not just use Gmail? I mean, why not just use the Gmail? Oh, I could do that. Yeah. Plant and yeah, because it's in a web browser, and I. Sure. I just I don't know why, but I I kind of like clients. Yeah, I'm with you. I I'm not big on web. That that seems like an augmentation to the real thing. Yeah. And so I, I prefer. But I'll add I'll add Gmail to the the uh, this whatever this is. It would be, it would be nice if Google made native apps for Why don't Windows they? and Windows Phone, right? Yeah. And if you've ever used the Gmail app on uh, Android or on iOS, uh, those are fantastic. Yeah, I use it on Android. Not bad. Yeah. Uh, okay, moving right along. Um, now I have to figure out how to get over there. So okay. can, I can tell another funny anecdote about my yeah, mom. Yeah, tell a funny eight. anecdote about your mom. That's uh, always good on the show. Yeah. So so the, so I, I've got I do a SharePoint netcast also. My mom sadly is the foil of all of my jokes. Um, but so we moved over to Windows 8 and we did the mail thing and we had that discussion. And my mom has collected a, a favorites over you know however long she's had a computer. She's got dozens and every page she goes through she favorites so she never has to find it again. We bring everything over to Windows 8, and she sees a little window or the Internet Explorer thing on the desktop. She clicks it, all of her favorite or start screen, all of her favorites are gone. I'm like, yeah, so this the the Metro uh, Internet Explorer doesn't do favorites, but there's another Internet Explorer, so it's only like four steps to get to the other Internet Explorer that does have your favorites. I do think that uh, having now used Windows 8 for a, a little while. I'd used it before, but I'm using, I thought I really should use it on a native machine yeah. that has touch and all that. That is the biggest confusion for me is this duality of Metro versus yes. desktop which, and the fact that there are two yeah. apps. And sometimes you're in ex Internet Explorer and it's not, a, it's not immediately apparent which one you're using and then the capabilities are different. Um, it seems that the best way to do this it would be to have one Explorer <laughs> with, <laughs> but, uh, but that's just me. I yes. don't know. Um, I don't know. But that's something you would do if you had one OS, Leo. <laughs> See, we, <laughs> oh. we have two and one. Yeah. 
Like it's the, two uh, great tastes that go together. Is yeah. that really, is that actually, it's starting to feel a little bit like that. No, it is literally exactly like that. Yeah. <laughs> and it, I think that will change over time. You know, uh, the expectation is that the desktop stuff uh, goes away over time, I, I suppose. But uh, obviously the Metro. See, that's, the metro, hmm, that's, well, yeah. that's, I got a problem Metro has that. a long way to go. It has a long way to go. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the, the desktop, I think, is there now because it has to be, not because Microsoft wants yeah. it to be. Yep. They haven't figured out how to everything to do yet. No, I mean, even in the early days of Windows, you know, people would go back to DOS to get real work done. Remember, they would play around with the mouse and say, oh, this is really cute and everything. But, I, you know, the apps that I run at the time, which would have been things like WordPerfect or Lotus 1, 2, 3 or whatever, were back in, in DOS. Yep. And they would leave Windows to go run those apps. And, and you know, it's, it's, a, it's a transition. Yep. So... Blue, blue, blue in our chat room, who I think is probably a fan <laughs> of the, the blue uh, Microsoft thing, says yep. they should just kill the desktop. He blames the Office Group for a desktop survival. Certainly in Windows RT, you could say that, but is, I don't think well, I, I, I <laughs> Office is certainly part of it. But there are many management interfaces, yeah. especially in Windows, that exist still only in the desktop. It's something that they just couldn't yeah. blur it out all at one time. Right. Um, Developers couldn't turn their stuff over fast enough. Right. Yeah. And, yeah, I think what you're going to see too. He's talking about updates over time. Is it wouldn't surprise me to discover that, um, and, and Todd knows this on uh, SharePoint in particular. We're going to see more mobile apps come out of the Office teams over time, and so there are SharePoint apps coming on various platforms, including yep. Windows 8, Windows Phone 8. But I wouldn't be surprised to see, you know, in the middle of the summer or something, you know, Word, Excel, and one other, you know, PowerPoint, maybe light versions that run only in Metro, and that they, they kind of put those feelers out and, and see what the best way to go is in that direction. But, you know, Office is Microsoft's most successful software in some ways. I mean, maybe barring Windows. And um, it, it's, you know, it's like a cart horse type of situation. I mean, um, you could blame Office all you want, but you could also credit Office with driving most of Microsoft's revenues for most of the you know past six quarters or so. So, well, um, yeah, and I think I think Office. I think you're exactly right. It's it's their their the the jewel in their crown, and I think the whole Office 365 yeah. movement, which is which is huge. It's their, their main focus is a testament to that. I think that's yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah. yep yep. And actually, I'm not to get I'm not with we're off on this tangent. There <laughs> there is a mobile Office hub on Windows Phone that has mobile versions of Word, Excel, uh, PowerPoint, and OneNote, and those apps are, are really kind of stripped down, but. They do some very important things, including not destroying the, the structure of the document that you're working on. So that if you push a, a Word doc through an Excel spreadsheet or a PowerPoint presentation, um, you can make light edits. You can do some stuff with that. You can even, you know, present and, and, you know, read these things and so forth. Push them back onto a Windows desktop that you haven't destroyed the underlying structure of the, uh, of the document, which used to be a problem with mobile apps. And it certainly is still a problem with other mobile apps that don't come from Microsoft. So... You know, something better than that, like a halfway point between Office Mobile on Windows 8, Windows Phone 8, rather, and the full-blown Office on Windows 8 is certainly plausible and probable, right, sometime over the next couple of years. I, I really do expect to see that. Yeah, and, and the Office web apps kind of fit in there somewhere, too, because they're, you know, you don't have to, mm -hmm. you don't need the desktop for that. You can find yeah, any version actually, of Internet Explorer you have wherever and, you know. right. Right. If it was just an on offline version of the Office web apps, it would be <laughs> good enough for most people right there. Yep, I agree. That's And that's one of the things that's worked its way into, into SharePoint is uh, the Office web apps, both on-premises and off. And it's been huge. It's been incredibly popular uh, for, yeah. for that kind of stuff, especially for this whole bring-your-own-device uh, paradigm that we're in now where people have iPads and all that, but they don't have Office for iPads. No problem. You know, Office web apps work great. <laughs> Yeah, actually, I think um, uh, on the SharePoint note, I, and I probably said this to you last summer when I saw you in Boston, uh, SharePoint management is really hard, in my opinion, uh, <laughs> very difficult. And, I, and that's you know, why I have a job, Paul. Yes. But, but, is it, but if you that. do a hosted uh, solution, you don't have to worry about that, right? Correct. A little bit. But I, I think that you still have to deal with the management issues a little bit. But I honestly think that the greatest benefit of hosting SharePoint or having it hosted for you is that you don't have to do as much of that stuff because I actually think that's kind of the ugliest part of SharePoint, right. which is an awesome tool, but the it's just it's one of the really complex uh, Office servers uh, yep. from a management perspective. I agree. I agree. Well, now that I've set up uh, Thunderbird, and <laughs> Jeez. could you check my mom's email because she hasn't been able to read anything? Contrary for two weeks to now. every recommendation received from the experts. Uh, 
I just thought I should give it a shot. Yep. <laughs> what is it that I, I you don't like about that? Exactly? I just want you to keep one tool handy, Leo, while you look at Thunderbird. What tool would that and be? That is the PC reset functionality <laughs> in Windows 8. <laughs> okay. We're going to take a fun. little break. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know, uh, don't confuse, when we, we talk a lot about uh, SharePoint on this show, obviously, because Todd's here, but don't confuse SharePoint with ShareFile. Do you know about ShareFile? Tell me all about it. I will. It's I would a, love to hear about it's it. It's actually a really great uh, Citrix solution for sharing files. I'm a big fan of Citrix. Of course you are. Okay. A cleverly named uh, because, uh, well, the issue is, I think your mom and many others, uh, <laughs> what, what they do is they attach big files yes. to their email, and then it bounces. Yes. Now, that's maybe okay if it's mom, but if it's a business, that's not. That's kind of embarrassing. It's kind of okay. I sent me. you the spreadsheets. I sent you the PowerPoints. <laughs> no, you didn't. I didn't get them. They bounced. Or worse, uh, you work in an industry where maybe privacy and security is important, say the medical or legal professions, then you really can't use email. It's not secure, so it's not private. So share file, I've been using ShareFile uh, to send files uh, to the radio stations. I do a lot of... Uh, uh, large audio files that I send. Uh, and it's just fantastic. Now, you, you should look at sharefile.com because you can customize it for a variety of industries. Everything from uh, accounting at the top to video at the bottom and everything in between, including, of course, medicine, legal, insurance, manufacturing, food service, government. And uh, one of the nice things about this is it complies with regulations in all of these areas. So what ShareFile does is uh, you could start a free trial right now by going to sharefile.com and using the offer code Windows. Because so I actually use uh, ShareFile uh, in lieu of some of those other uh, kind of consumer -y products, and I've been so happy. First of all, among other things, you can check <clears throat> boxes that say only allow this to be shared for a day, a week, a month, uh, or always, you know, never expires. You can uh, say they can download it once or an uh, unlimited amount of times. So you can. Uh, actually require that they enter their email address and name. You will get a notification if you wish when they've opened it. Uh, you could secure it with a password. You can you can really protect yourself with sharefile.com. Send files of almost any size with a top security. Get notifications about uh, when the files have been opened and by whom. And it's really nice for your recipients, too, i got to say, because it's uh, you don't, they don't have to create an account on some other service. They don't have to. They see. They don't see the ShareFile logo. They see your company logo. It's totally customized, uh, and it's very easy. They just click a link and download it. They can. It'll zip uh, multiple files uh, before they download it to make it easier for them. You got to try this ShareFile.com. They do have an Outlook plugin. Makes it just as easy to use as email. Oh, yeah. But uh, or you can use the web interface, uh, and of course they have Sync. In fact, I've got to put the Sync tool on here. I haven't done that yet. Uh, the sync to tools that uh, will automatically synchronize any number of folders from your computer to ShareFile makes it very easy. Uh, I met, you know, I ran, I ran into a woman at a restaurant and I was taking pictures. I took some pictures of her kids at, with her permission, and um, and she get, she said, "Oh, I'd love those." I said, "Yeah, no problem." I got her email address and I shared them with her on a ShareFile. I got an email when she got them, and it couldn't have been easier. And it was, a, they were large. They were maybe uh, 200 megabytes worth of pictures. Wow. It was just so simple. ShareFile.com. Use the promo code Windows, and I think you'll be very, very happy. And make sure you enter your industry so it'll customize it for the business yeah. uh, that you're in. Uh, moving right along, let's talk about the new license for uh, Office, right? Oh, oh, that was <laughs> oh. I, that was I was surprised that they uh, that what that, happened? Uh, relented immediately. They yes, relented. I, I, I was <laughs> shocked and amazed. Pleasantly. Did, did we predict this last week that they would relent? They brought the uh, transfer clause back for a uh, I wasn't box actually versions. positive they were going to do this. I mean, I the this is one of those great hot button topics that we always get in the tech industry where it really impacts a pretty small number of customers and the people who are not happy with it really vocal. And uh, Microsoft was right to change it. I think they did the right thing. They basically put it back the way it was with Office 2010, but the Obviously, the broader story here is that the the big push with Office 2013 is that they're pushing towards subscription services, um, and that's true even of, on PC bundles, which is really interesting because in the past, Microsoft has tried different approaches to getting people to buy Office with new PCs. And so with Office 2010, they offered a very stripped-down version of Office called Starter Edition that had uh, very light versions of Word and Excel, lots of advertising in the apps. You could click a button, upgrade electronically, and get kind of a, a full-scale version. 
But with this version, obviously they're pushing Office 365, and now you can you can actually buy a card for Office 365 at retail. You can buy it online, obviously, and a lot of new PCs now, including Microsoft's Surface Pro, come with Office 365 Home Premium pre-installed, and then you can click a button, agree to the you know pay the price ninety nine dollars. Uh, I think you get a thirty day trial first, and it's already on there. You know you just you're up and running. And uh, it's just a completely different way of doing it. Now, of course, as soon as you start talking subscription services, there are certain people who just don't want to hear that. Or there are people that legitimately don't fall under the, the needs of an Office 365 subscription. You know, they have one PC. They just want one copy of Office. You know, maybe that $99 a year for the foreseeable future doesn't make a lot of sense to them. And so they can still buy these retail copies of Office. And so people looked at the licensing agreement and found out that with Office 2013, if you bought it at retail, if you bought that kind of old-fashioned MSI-based installer version of Office, you no longer had transfer rights, meaning that you can't take this version of Office from one PC and install it on another PC. So if something went, unless it was within warranty, I guess was the deal. So uh, if the PC hard drive failed or if you sold the PC to someone else and you wanted to take Office with you to your new PC, technically speaking, with this new version of Office, you couldn't do that. And uh, obviously, everyone got very upset about that, and then they changed it. And so now it's back to the way it was with uh, uh, with Office 2010, where you can transfer it. And there are certain restrictions on that, you know, how many times you can do it in, in whatever time frames. Obviously, they don't want people to pirate the software. But, um, you know, it's just a good example of, I think, Microsoft listening to complaints and actually acting very quickly. Uh, this is not the way they tend to do things. So. Yeah, like within a week, right? I mean, that yeah, is... Yeah, it was very quick. Yeah, yeah it was very quick. Yeah. Yeah. Good. And, it, and I was thinking about, so when I moved my mom's PC over, it was a, a Vista box. It was five years old, and we bought Office for it five years ago, paid them 130 bucks or whatever, and then never got another penny from her until we got the new PC and put the new version of Office Why on. didn't you just keep the old version? Was there some compelling... Well, I mean, I'm sure she doesn't It's probably Office 2003 or something. Yeah, but I'm sure she, I'm seriously, I don't well, think she knows or cares, right? You're probably And probably it looked, right. I mean, okay, she doesn't have the ribbon. Right, which... Probably another source of confusion. Well, yeah. um, you know, her old version of Office was crank yeah. operated. You had to. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, I can see why they want to do the $99 a year thing because. Oh, it's yeah, because you know, you're going to get money every day yeah. or every every month, every, every year. Yeah. No, but I think well, and I also felt like that wasn't too onerous. I didn't feel like it was too. Again, and if you have the, I've got five the, copies. And, it's, yeah, it's a good deal. It's a household license. If you have a family, uh, yeah. I've got two kids in school, both of who actually use um, Office themselves. My wife uses yeah. Office. I mean. $99 a year is a good deal. And it's and you're not just it's not just Microsoft fleecing you for a certain amount of money every year. I mean, they're updating this thing quarterly. That well, that's the other advantage. Yeah. And automatic yeah. updates yeah. and uh, features. Yep. Yeah. New product versions will come down the line if your subscription is about, you know, uh, online at that time you get it, you know, and it's yeah. automatic and I, I there there are definitely good reasons to want this. But again, not everyone does. And I think that the, the this licensing change doesn't impact Office 365. In fact, Office 365 Home Premium has the loosest license I've ever seen. You can, on the fly, <laughs> decommission and recommission PCs. And you, you could install it on 20 PCs and just, you know, recommission them as you want on the go. It's, it's, it's really kind of cool. I could visit your house and use a computer that doesn't have Office and, and stream the apps live yeah, over the Internet. I love using that feature. Office on demand. You, yeah. know? you almost get uh, the impression they want you to go with that Office 365. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. almost feel like there's some push yeah. there. I can't quite put you my mean finger on it. You mean as opposed to the desktop office. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, but it's not, just, it's not just onerous stuff, right? It's, it's, they're, they're obviously, uh, they've made some changes to the retail versions that are bad. You know? So um, Office uh, 2010 Home and Student or whatever that version was called, came with three product keys or uh, the ability to install the product on three PCs. The new version only has one. It's roughly the same price. And so people can look at that and say, well, you know, look what they've done here. And, <clears throat> and yeah, so that's kind of an onerous change. But, you know, I, I feel that it, that kind of thing is outweighed by the sheer number of benefits that you get by going with the subscription, assuming that you need yeah. multiple copies of Office. Yeah, and I think that's the thing. I think for most people, they see the subscription as being more expensive over the long haul. Because like my mom, she'd spend one hundred and thirty dollars oh, yeah. once once every three years, and I yep. I think for people to to not get so upset about the increased price, Microsoft's gonna have to do a great job of telling them why why it costs more expensive, what's in it for them, the, uh, mm -hmm. the more act or more quick uh, updates, being able to install it when you move, that kind of stuff. So that's what that's yeah, what I, the message I, needs I, to be. It's it's hard not to f like 
kind of fall into the, uh, you know, Microsoft marketing speak part of this. But, you know, like I said, I mean, there are benefits to it. It's the type of thing where, okay, so maybe I spend a hundred bucks or 150 bucks once and I buy office and I, I skip one or two product updates and I keep using this old version of office and I have, you know, saved money. Um, and you have sort of, but maybe there are new features or functionality that get added to the product after you bought whatever version you bought that would benefit you. Or maybe now because you are paying for it, you use more of the applications. You know, one of the other things you get with the 365 subscription is the equivalent of the professional plus product, yep. which is not a hundred dollars or $150. It's, 400 and something dollars to buy that thing at retail for one PC. It's a very expensive version of Office. It has additional applications, additional capabilities, and so forth. So that, that sticker shock is a big deal. I remember going in <laughs> a couple, maybe it was last version or a couple of versions ago, into a store, seeing the big Office box, and choking and saying, I, yep. I cannot, yeah. I cannot I bring myself I mean. I don't to think, buy that. I don't think most people do that. That's why. And that's, yeah. that's what I meant when I said, you know, this retail licensing thing is... It's important to do because it silences a legitimate criticism, something that really was bad about it. But the reality is this isn't really how most people are going to buy this software. Yeah. Just it's it's a very different shift in philosophy. You know, if you think about how people looked at, at software before, you know, you buy it once, you use it till you die. and But, but companies want no, these but you, but recurring software streams. and But you don't. Yeah, they do. But, I mean, I, I you don't really use it till you die. That's the thing. I mean, I... I PCs don't last forever, and uh, software doesn't last forever. Uh, you you know you could use Office ninety five, I guess, or Office <laughs> two thousand, or Office you know two thousand three, or whatever. And some people maybe still do. I don't know, but uh, the world has moved on. I mean, there are niceties to uh, these products, and then if you really rely on them, like I do as a writer because I use Word a lot, or whatever other people use all day long, uh, a lot of people do rely on Office. It's not just a nicety in many cases. Really, it's the feature really set changes that much. I mean, no, not version to version. Not no, not Couldn't necessarily. Couldn't you still use Office two thousand three and and really do everything you do? Mm. Well, uh, yeah, you could, but that's like saying, could you drive a you know ninety seven Chevette? <laughs> it's not like saying I'm using. X, it's yes, not like I saying could. I, you could you, you could use Windows XP. I mean, yes, you could, of course, but I yeah. don't think the difference between Office. 2003 and Office 2013 is as big as the difference in XP and depends I, on who okay, the user so is. So actually, I, I would say that it is is big. Um, okay. It's not it's not so much a functional difference as it is a visibility to features difference. And of one the of the ribbon. things that yeah, Microsoft um, was very frustrated for many years, and the reason they have the ribbon is because they always do that feedback loop thing. And every year they would you know every every three years they would release a new version of Office, and the, the feedback would come in. And people would say, oh, I wish you had this feature. I wish you had this feature. And every single, every single version, eight of the top ten features that people wanted were already in the product. They just right. didn't know that they existed. So Discoverability is a big issue. Or knowing yeah. what the and, name of it is. Or, yeah. Yeah. So when you think about um, uh, moving Office to a subscription service, five years ago, the discussion would have been around, well, how do we price this thing so that it makes sense? And the discussion would have been, you're going to buy Office the way you used to. You're buying one copy of Office for one PC, but now you're going to subscribe to it. So we're going to charge you $35 a year or $50 a year or whatever it is. So wherever it starts to make sense for an individual. And you get no other benefits other than the fact that you're subscribing. You know, that's it. That's You, you get updates, maybe, that kind of thing. But I think the thing that's very interesting about Office 365 Home Premium, the reason that it truly is an advantage to, again, to families, to households that need multiple copies of Office is that it's so much more than that. You get a much higher end version of Office. You get that ability to install, you know, decommission, recommission PCs on the fly, Office on demand, Office web apps, more SkyDrive storage, more Skype minutes. You get all these other benefits. It's not an onerous amount of money to pay and you get a bunch of extra stuff. And so it's not just about math and it's not just about giving Microsoft a steadier income stream. It is literally a win-win assuming you need multiple versions of Office. Yeah, and and talking about the upgrading different versions, uh, and talking about who who it benefits. Obviously, my mom, you know, can can look at uh, you know brownie recipes and all that on on Office two thousand three. But my wife's an accountant, and Excel, for instance, has gotten some great improvements, number of rows and number of columns and that kind of stuff with with Office twenty ten and twenty thirteen. So for her, you know, moving to the new version is absolutely valuable. Yeah. Um, yep. So it just depends on who you are. Yeah. All right. I mean, you know, I, I'm going to give him my hundred bucks, but I just, uh, I just wonder if that's how important it is to do so.
but I now, I now, I'm happy. you know, we live in a, you know, this. I mean, you've covered Apple for years and years. I mean, we kind of live in a throwaway society. Right. We're buying, we're buying very nice things that we replace very quickly. <laughs> um, no, I mean seriously, right? No, and no, no, I agree. So, no, but we do. So technology is huge that way. If you, you know, for some reason, it's okay for someone to spend five to nine hundred dollars on an iPad every single year, right? Even though the iPad two, three, four, whatever they bought is Very not a huge difference over yeah, the right. previous version. Yeah. So we're kind of applying this uh, thing to software. I mean, yeah, but hardware and software is different. I mean, hardware you get something, you can feel it. Software you can, is going to press your friends with it. Yeah. <laughs> I got the new bit. Well, but, yeah. but you know what though? You pay for things in the same way that are very much like software, like electricity, yeah. your cable, uh, you know, your mortgage. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess your mortgage pays for a thing that is there, but. You know, I, I, this is a this Here's is a, 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 a way of paying for things like leasing a car. Right. Um, when, and even uh, no one who, by the way, no one who leases a car ever thinks for a moment, I don't own this thing. Oh, right. No, that's you true. Yeah. I mean, this is my car. It's right. not the bank's right. car. It's right. not right. Volvo's car. It's this is my car. You know. No, I don't mind. It's not the leasing problem I have. I don't have any problem with leasing it and uh, or leasing software or whatever it is, whatever we're doing, renting software. It's just a question of whether you needed to upgrade or not. And I think one of the advantages sure. of that hundred dollar thing is it makes it easier it less painful to upgrade yep you, you feel yeah. like you're you know you, you well, are getting something and it's cheaper absolutely. it's the it's the sharepoint thing so yeah on on the on the business side of office 365 the people who have office 365 already are starting to get emails saying look we're going to upgrade you to this new version now some of them may not want to move ahead very quickly and so they have windows that they can work with where they can uh, move certain users over to the new stuff they can move the, all of the users over they can pick the dates you know they can do that kind of stuff this is the, a, a kind of nice automation where you've got Microsoft doing the dirty work of the hard part right. of an upgrade that in the past, aside from all the other issues around upgrading, like price, you know, training, <coughs> et cetera, is one of the many reasons why they would have just put that thing off and never done it. Right. You know, and now you're getting the benefits of these new versions of the services and the software, not just for the people administering it, but to the actual users. And you, so, you know, again, it's, it, it is kind of a win-win. I, I, I know it's easy to look at this like it's Microsoft gouging people, but... Uh, well, over it, it, the three it. years I use it, it'll be about the same amount as if I went out and bought a package. <coughs> yeah. So it's about the same, I would I would guess, or three to five years. Um, here's a question, though. If they do come out with Android and iOS versions of Office, do you think that will be included in the subscription price, or will that be a separate purchase? No, I think that's the only way they're going to sell it. I think it is... Yeah. Uh, yeah, then it's attractive, right? Now well, the other thing, and somebody just mentioned this, but I only use a word processor, or you know, it mm -hmm. would be would be, uh, and I we already have way too many SKUs, but it would be <laughs> maybe cool to offer just the word processor. Just word as, yeah. yeah. I, by the way, they'll get there. Yeah. <laughs> Microsoft loves to yeah. skew it up. You know, nothing wrong um, with SKUs. Well, and, and another thing about the uh, the Office apps for Android and Apple, if they sell them then Apple and Google get money. But if they give it sure. away as part of the right. Office 365 thing, then those guys get nothing and Microsoft uh -huh. gets all the money. Oh, so clever accounting. I, I don't know how, you know. The only, thing know. I, the only thing I would say about this, though, is um, when you look at the Office subscription today, five PCs or devices, it's Macs and PCs. Macs and PCs are full-powered computers. They have full-featured versions of Office, right? Multiple Office applications, Everything that Office can do is in these is in these suites. Um, when they uh, open it up to Android and iOS, as we expect them to do, I, what we also don't expect them to do is make those things very full featured. And so now you're you're going to use up one of your slots for something that's right. not going to be very good necessarily. Right. So it, it, in other words, it's probably a good thing to have Office on an iPad if that's what you need. So you so think maybe. it'll be one of the five slots? It will be, yeah. Ooh. But if and you can provision great. and deprovision quickly, right? Then it's not a big it's deal. It's not as bad. It's a pain. But I mean, but... It, it, to me, it's 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 but it's an interesting trade off because obviously it makes the subscription more valuable to a wider group of people, but from a sheer dollar standpoint, it makes it slightly less valuable in in the sense that right. now one of those slots is it's taken up by a machine version. that can't do everything, right. um, and maybe has something like the Office web apps on it. If you right. think about um, the Windows Phone version of Office, you know. I mean, do you want to, is that worth $25 a year or whatever? However, that works at $20 a year. I can't do simple math. Um, you know, that's kind of a tough call. Right. But yeah, yeah, you can 
provision. And so so we, we mentioned the fact that the brow we talked about the browser ballot. That's how we found out about sleep near. <laughs> um, yes. And uh, and then it, we also mentioned that it's strangely oddly. Sleep near secrets is going to be my next book, by the way. <laughs> Oprah, Oprah will have it on her book club. It'll be major motion picture. The secret is that there's a browser called Sleep Near. That's the secret. <laughs> it was a dark and short book. Sleep Near. Maybe yeah. uh, make it an e-book. Uh, it's a web page. But we did mention, and I asked you, I remember asking you this. Hey, the browser ballot seems to have disappeared from the EU version of Windows. Yeah. Just, it's gone. Good stuff. What I wonder, maybe they got, maybe the EU, EU said, oh, you, you don't have to do that yeah. anymore. Well, actually not. Uh, in fact... <laughs> Turns out. <laughs> Turns out, $732 million fine. No, here, but here's the thing. I, I don't, I'm okay that it happened, right? Like, it's it's plausible, sort of believable that, you know, I, it was a mistake. I just hope somebody got fired for this. But it was, it was like that for 18 months. Yeah, I don't know. It was until you mentioned it. Yeah, and then, it's my uh, fault. Uh -huh. You know, I, that's a, that amazes me. How did they get away with that? And then when it happened, you know, it's really funny to watch companies react to bad news or, you know, Microsoft's behavior during their various antitrust trials was obviously horribly wrong. They dragged everything out. They were really belligerent and everything. And then this happens, and they were like, eh. sorry. Sorry about that. Mm. You know, yeah, that's exactly what Whoops. happened. You know, we just... Whoopsies. It was, <laughs> yeah, I, I, it was, they, were, they were one step away from saying, oh, you know, Fred the college intern forgot to yeah. uh, work that in. Our bad. They and, say it, it's, it was inadvertent. Yeah. That was a mistake. Yeah. <sighs> Uh, so and, and it was a voluntary agreement. I mean, EU didn't force them to do this. This was Microsoft's suggestion. Here, what if we? Because well, it, it was a fakatka. It's thing. a settle, what we call settlement. Settlement. You know, it's, it's, you know. Yeah, but I don't think the EU um, said, "Well, here, put in a ballot." The first time you run, actually, I think they did. Oh, really? Well, I, I, okay, you're saying in other words, Microsoft was the one who came up with that idea. I would bet. You know, by the way, if you go, if you were, if you were to go back to the original Microsoft antitrust trial in the United States, before the United States government sued them. One of the things that the, gov the DOJ went to Microsoft w with was the notion of a browser ballot. And, the, and that was one of the things uh. Bill Gates said, absolutely not. They were uh. never going to do that kind of thing. So th <laughs> this notion of a choice uh, has been floating around for a long time. Okay. In fact, you remember the, the comparison they made. They said that would be like you know, forcing Coke to put one can of Pepsi in every six pack. <laughs> you know, <laughs> remember? That's a good line, yeah. actually. Yeah. So for and those who, just, who never saw it, and we, we in the U.S. didn't see it, but... When you first uh, it booted up your version of Windows, it would say, okay, uh, which browser would you like to use? And it gave you, besides Internet Explorer, I presume it was Chrome and Firefox. And randomized so that there wasn't a... And it was word. no I, one in front. Yeah. Well, and not alphabetical. Near, I mean, there were some very odd... Opera was probably in there. Uh, yeah. And then for some reason, after Service Pack 1, there it is. Opera, Internet Explorer, Safari. Wow. Firefox no, or Chrome. not even available anymore in Windows. And that's, by the way, that's scrolled all the way yeah, left. Yeah, there's, there's a lot more. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy Kenny's web browser. And, <laughs> yep. Yeah, they're all in there. Uh, and then just after Service Pack 1, I just stopped doing that. It just, nobody noticed. For a, seven, what, 17 months? You know, we forget, we forget because it's so laughable today. We spend <laughs> a lot of the time talking about Microsoft sort of making fun of them and their ineptness and they can't move quickly enough and everything, but... When all this stuff was going on, especially the U.S. part of it, every the whole industry feared Microsoft. Um, they were they were they could enter any market or pretend right. they were going to enter any market and send the fear to God to anybody. Right. People would just give up the ghost and not compete, and and they were just to be feared. And it's it's funny to think like that now, you know. Um, this is like the last leftover of that age. You know, it's amazing to me that. The, the notion that somehow consumers somewhere need to be offered a choice of browser in an operating system as part of setup, you know, uh, or a, I guess it's a post setup thing is, uh, it's, it's just laughable. It's, it's silly. Um, well, there was one advantage people learned about unusual browsers like yes, Sleep Near. Right, right. Well, it's, yeah. it's like you're, you're installing Windows, like username, password, machine name. Would you like to install Linux instead? Right. You know? Oh, well, it's not quite know. that bad. No, well, I know, but it's, well, it's almost it's that bad. I mean, when you think about the, the mix of applications Flock, that we use and so forth. Max Thorf. <laughs> we've, scrolled, yes. we've scrolled to the right. Green browser. Flash, Flash Peak Slim browser. <laughs> Flock. I remember Flock. I don't. You know, some of these probably don't even exist anymore. Maybe that's what my, the intern well, thought. So oh, well. Starting with Safari, by the way. Yes, Safari's. Well, it wasn't. It's Safari, random, right? Safari for Windows doesn't Wouldn't it be funny exist? if you got... Show that page again, Alex. If this, by random chance, were the browser choice you were right. given right. as your... <laughs> 
What? Max I Fon? I want the green one. I, it's important oh. to me that I be green, Leo. Green browser. It's your best choice of flexible and powerful green web browser. It's not even grammatical. <laughs> it's not well, even grammatical. When people talk about government being too big, I think this is pretty much what they're looking at. <laughs> so how much so, how much does this bring the, the total now? Uh, uh, it's over two two billion, I think is the <sighs> it's almost exactly two billion. I think it's like one point nine something billion. Yeah, it, yeah. So wow. do you think do you think Microsoft had three uh, seven hundred million sitting in a cookie jar somewhere for when the EU finally decided to Well that's to, the uh, funny thing. It's oh it's probably they, that they risked it yeah. and just, you know. I mean it's not that much for them. But that's a lot. Seven hundred. I mean, let's not. I mean, let's. Pretty be soon, real. it's real money, right? Let's, I let's mean, say, but, but so. But here's what's going on in the world today. Google and Facebook are dominating the online world. Apple is dominating the devices world. Android is dominating the smartphone world, and Microsoft is getting fined for something that nobody cares about at all. <laughs> I'm I, seriously. This is such a non-issue in the scope of what's going on in the world today. It's. It is. Don't they have something absolutely insane? Do. But that said, they did they did do this. They did agree to it. <laughs> so I mean, you know, they did break the law. They just, you know, the first company in history to break an antitrust agreement with the EU. So you know, they got that under their belt. That's another little trophy <laughs> they can put up in the Microsoft Museum in by, Redmond or whatever. By mistake. Yeah. <laughs> that was that was the funny part about it. I think you know, in the in the wake of this, it was like, yeah, we looked into this, and um, ah. yeah, we're sorry. Oops. Yes. Oops. Our show today brought to you by Rackspace. That's why Todd's here. <laughs> I would never do this normally. Have a, but you're not. Uh, you work, what do you do for Rackspace? I'm I'm a, I'm a SharePoint consultant. I actually yeah, so that's yeah, not. I, I I don't touch. In fact, you don't even like OpenStack, probably. Leo. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Uh, OpenStack. Actually, did you know this is a, a, a kind of an intro? You may know this, Todd, because you, you work there. But uh, Rackspace got together with NASA. The National Aeronautics and Space Administration to create OpenStack. This it's it's kind of a big deal. I yeah. think that's really cool. Yeah, everybody talks about cloud computing, but not all providers are the same. Some we won't name names use proprietary technology, <laughs> and uh, that means if you ever wanted to move off, you really you you'd have to kind of rejigger everything. Um, what you what you I think what you want is an open cloud solution built on open standards. It's just my I'm just thinking just throwing that out there. Just throwing it out there. Mm -hmm. Rackspace is the open cloud company. It co-founded OpenStack and now runs the world's largest. Did you, I didn't know this. The world's largest open cloud. So you're not locked into a single provider. You have the freedom to move your apps, your code, your websites between multiple OpenStack-based clouds, public or private, on-premise, hosted. You have the biggest choice, the best variety. Build what you want, where you want, how you want it, all backed by Rackspace's world-renowned fanatical support, like this guy. Leads of, look at him. He looks I, like a fanatic. Yeah, I look fanatic. I'm described like that all the time. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I want you to try it today. Rackspace.com slash open. You can download it. It's free, right? Yep. Cost you nothing? No, nope. free as in beer and free as in speech. Yeah, libre. Download the open cloud at rackspace.com slash open. And, uh, you know, I've, I've loved Rackspace for years, and I've been trying to get them on this show for a long time. So I'm really pleased to have them. And, and here we are. <laughs> and it's funny because they just all at once. Yeah, and that was completely random. I just happened to yeah. be. I saw you a, a couple of months ago at NMX and told you I was going to be up here. Oh, for, we're thrilled to for have you. Tech on and, and you're not you're not flogging Rackspace anyway. No, so, no, no, no. but we you know I like Rackspace and I do I do you know I mean I I understand this is kind of uh, this is a Microsoft podcast, but I like open. You know that you know yeah. me. Uh, Nokia says. Where the hell are you, Instagram? <laughs> Where are you? I want you on my Lumia. I, you know, I was just talking about how Microsoft is not the dominant force that it used to be. You know, in the past, if someone was going to release an application on anything, it would come onto Windows. Right. Not and now anymore. we're like the hat in hand, you know, poor guy on the corner begging Instagram to, you know, excuse me, sir. <laughs> Can we have Instagram, might, please? Might I have some Polaroid <laughs> photo effects? <laughs> Did they re they released uh, something called uh, Insta with love num num for Insta for Insta with love two, from I'm sorry two Insta with two love. Insta with love, which is the greatest name for an app I've ever seen it in my like life. Sounds like a James Bond movie. Two <laughs> Insta with love, <laughs> you only know. But you know what they've done here. So 
two two things. First of all, Nokia in apparently 15 minutes created an app that duplicates the most popular effect in Instagram, <laughs> thus proving that anyone could write an app like this. And Pro probably okay. not a lot of shocked faces. Uh, <laughs> you know. Yeah. No, and so there's one thing. They the even, thing, they though, even is, started a petition on change.org. Yeah, and we have <laughs> dozens, dozens of signatures, so that's going great. Because when we think about big government, this is what we want them doing. Yeah. Yeah. So the other thing, though, and the, the thing that bothers me about this is what we're really highlighting here is an admittedly popular app that, even if it shows up on Windows Phone 8 this year, yeah. was released two years ago on iOS. So, yeah, so, for example, uh, another app that was released on iOS two years ago is something called Angry Bird Seasons. Maybe you've heard of it. Oh, yes. That okay. was released uh, last month on Windows Phone 8, and, um, and I'm happy to have it. I'm glad we have that. But, you know, the Angry Birds craze has kind of come and gone, you know? <laughs> and I think that these releases almost serve to highlight what's wrong with Windows Phone 8. You know, in other words, that even if we get this app, There'll be a little news cycle around that. And the news cycle is going to be two years later, right. Windows Phone finally gets Instagram, you know. Now that it's, it's passe. Yeah. It, oh, and it will be like tied to the Nokia Lumia, you know, whatever, that has the greatest phone ever added into a smartphone. And and now we have figured out how to wait, make those incredible widescreen photos look like crap using an Instagram filter that will turn it into a 1970s Polaroid shot. Carl Zeiss lens and all that other stuff so we can take yeah. great pictures. And, you yeah. can just smear Vaseline right on top of your <laughs> smartphone and get that effect right now without the app. But, you know, for some reason, this is a big deal for people. So You do have a good point, though. It just it, it, For Nokia to make noise about this just kind of highlights the lack, not anything else. Yeah, it's, it's a tough, it's a rock and hard place thing because obviously... The lack of these apps on Windows Phone is a problem, and they need it needs to be highlighted in some way. But I mean, Nokia just—it's like a—it's like they're—it's like they're begging on a street corner. Yeah. I don't know how else to put it. It's just—it's—it's it's weird. I'm, I'm kind of glad they're doing it, but um, I'd almost rather see Nokia just put out an app that just does this right. and say, "Look, we're just going to solve this problem." You know? Todd's mom just texted me, said that there's no <laughs> Instagram on Windows Phone 8. Well, that's did that. From, did she text you from her StarTac? <laughs> <laughs> 4448 yeah. it's, like, it's like you're there. <laughs> <laughs> I think I have the same mom. <laughs> um, Nokia says it's going to make more for Microsoft then it pays to Microsoft. Yeah. This is very confusing. This is crazy. So uh, this is one of those interesting debates in the Microsoft world. You know, a couple of years ago now, uh, Nokia made this big strategic partnership with Microsoft over Windows Phone. And so they're obviously focusing on Windows Phone as their primary platform going forward. They're providing some IP to Microsoft in the form of largely location services, but other things. They, they've contributed to Windows Phone 8 in ways that we don't really know about. But interestingly, they're also licensing Windows Phone 8. So money is going in both directions. And uh, one of the questions has always been, you know, which of these companies is making, a, you know, making more out of this? And, you know, maybe one of the broader questions is why is Microsoft even charging for Windows Phone? It seems like this is something maybe, you know, if they were serious about pushing, they could give away for free like some of the other competitors are doing. So... According to Nokia, which every, I think everyone thought that uh, Nokia would be the company paying more, they claim that over the lifetime of this agreement, which I actually don't remember off the top of my head how long it is, um, that they will, in fact, make more money from Microsoft than Microsoft will from them, if you will, uh, because of the cross-licensing payments that they make. We do, we do know that uh, Microsoft, we know this because Nokia has said this, that Microsoft is paying Nokia $250 million a quarter, or $1 million, I'm sorry, one billillion dollars a year, right? Wow, that sound right? Yeah, one billion quarter yeah. of a quarter yep. of a billion a quarter. Yep. Yeah, there you go. Simple yep. math. Yep. Yep. Uh, well done to su <laughs> to support Windows Phone. That's crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. Well, that's a, almost a EU uh, fine. Yeah, no right kidding. there. Yeah. Could could one million of that go to an Instagram app, and we could yeah. just move on from that little topic? Yeah. I mean. Well, you know, the real problem is it isn't just Instagram. Somebody's saying, uh, you know, he uh, banks with TD. And they aren't doing a Windows Phone app. They yeah. said. Oh, it. sure, sure. And that's yep. really, you know, that really hits you harder. If you have a bank that doesn't that has an app on iOS and Android, but not on Windows Phone. Yep. I mean, if those things really, you know, probably hit yeah, you yeah. harder than it. Because there's all Instagram like apps. The, all you need is the one. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah, we we have many Instagram like apps. Right. Uh, some of them are fantastic. We have apps that can do the tilt shift and right. Polaroid effect and fi You finally got Photosynth. I'm very happy about that. <laughs> Photosynth, yep, yeah. works great. Because that um, was on and iOS for a long time. <laughs> I know. Please don't get started on that. I, <laughs> That's on Microsoft. I know, yeah. I know. When on um, Tech News Today earlier, they were talking about this Instagram thing, and, and some people are moving to that as their social platform of choice, you know, celebrities is, or whoever. rapidly so. And yeah. Windows Phone 8 users just yep. can't right. join in. Actually, that's there's a good a, point. Yeah, there's this is not very common, but I I have heard from at least one person who said that their bank made an app for Windows Phone Seven, <laughs> and <laughs> are not making a version for Windows Phone Ooh. Eight. Ooh. Yeah, that's rough. So imagine imagine you uh, knowing that your bank was on this platform, adopted it, <laughs> and then moved to Windows Phone Eight, and now the app doesn't work, right. and they're never going to update it. Aye. That's yeah. you know the the answer to the Instagram thing is very simple. If Instagram just made an API, then there would be developer just like Twitter does. There are plenty. You know, Twitter well, doesn't be, have a but native app. That would be app, professional, Leo. You're, yeah. you're <laughs> you know, that would be uh, something with credibility. Yeah, so yeah. easy to do. And then Insta and it's probably not expensive, and it wouldn't really you wouldn't lose. Maybe they're worried about losing control. Uh, but I don't think the app is what's important. I think the participation... Well, of course, Twitter has decided to kind of kill third parties. Yeah, they've, they've become a little hostile towards that. Actually, yep. Twitter wants you to go to their web page. <laughs> That's really the, the oh, real answer. I'd be happy to that. do if their web page didn't suck. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, you there, know. there is that. Yeah. Uh, what about that, though, HTML5 apps on uh, Windows Phone 8? I mean, that's a credible way to respond, is it not? Actually, yeah. You know, um, this app, uh, one of the apps I use that way is uh, Google Reader. And Google Reader is not designed for Windows Phone 8. It's just designed for HTML5 mobile phones. Right. And so it's probably targeting Android or whatever. But that's an example of a web app that looks fantastic well, on I Windows Phone 8. Um, I know yeah. Facebook and Instagram is owned by Facebook. I know Facebook hated their HTML5 app on iOS but it does because it was sluggish but it does mm -hmm. strike me that that's one simple way for a, if if Instagram or Twitter or a company wants to make sure you go to their web page we'll do a good mo a compelling mobile sure. client and then it will work on every phone now now I'm not an Instagram user but is there a feature parity between the apps on iOS and Android and the web page I mean if you could just go to the web page with that Take care of everybody. On Android or on Instagram? Oh, yeah, on, on Windows Phone, if you go to the Instagram There is page. no Instagram uh, I don't web think interface. A, That's the problem. Yeah, it's so just then, a, no. <laughs> there is is there, no. Oh, no, they just announced it. Actually, maybe this is their, maybe this is their answer to that. Let's see. They just not, announced it like as we were. <laughs> yeah, just now. Like, they just told me. How very timely of them. That in was my the, ear, they said, uh, hey. No, I think uh, maybe I'm wrong. Am I wrong? Uh, it's... Hey, by the way, should I not install Windows Essentials on my Windows? Yeah. <laughs> or more importantly, right now. <laughs> well, do I was not, just thinking. Uh, while we're here. Do not click the shutdown button, Leo. Yes. Somebody, <laughs> this, this is a joke because I did once while I was talking to Paul and it shut the whole show up. <laughs> the, <laughs> Paul, because uh, somebody in the chat room said, well, you could do Pop 3 with Windows Mail if you use Essentials. But that's not what you want to it's do. Windows, yeah, the Windows Live Mail application. Uh, right. you, you can and should install Essentials, but... I would cherry pick which applications you install. Um, photo gallery is particularly excellent. Messenger um, probably not a good idea right now. <laughs> so you make can it, install make it fast. But that will be that will be going away. <laughs> yep. You got another month uh, and then photo gallery and movie maker should I install that. Yeah, yeah. That's M mail. I don't. You know. Yeah. I don't install mail. I don't install writer. Not because it's not great, but because I just don't happen to use it. That's a right. blog. It's a great tool. blog. That's what I use. It is a great blog. blog tool. Yeah. yeah. yeah and now great. this worries me. It says it's going to update my Microsoft SkyDrive. You'll be fine. Yeah. No, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> okay. No, that's in front the, of a live uh, audience. Local, the local sync application. Oh, that's updating. just adding that to it. Okay, yeah. that's cool. So there's that's one way to put Pop Three on your Windows Eight for your my, mom. My mom will be so relieved. Yeah, Windows, she, Windows she sends her regards. <laughs> Mrs. Clint. <laughs> um, <laughs> she's, she's, <laughs> the poor woman has no idea. <laughs> Mrs. Clint, I'm calling on behalf of Todd. He's, does she sign notes from Todd Clint's mother? <laughs> she will you know, now. Like Todd has like asked now. me to tell you. Welcome back, Cotter. <laughs> I'm, I should, I, she Epstein's doesn't mother. sound like that, of course. She's in Iowa. Uh, a little bit, yeah, without the accent. but yeah. Iowans don't sound like that. No, we, we have no accent. That's what I hear. Of course, I hear that from other Iowans, so... No, you yeah. know why? Because of Tom Brokaw. 
I, who is also he's from Nebraska, I think, but the same. That's right next. Door. Right next door. Yeah, it's the same thing. <laughs> yeah, you, you fly over them both at the same time. And, yeah. and he became, I think, the the except for the speech impediment, which I'll never <laughs> understand why you would make a network news anchor with a speech impediment. But that's another problem. But his accent became the default. And Johnny Carson, who was also yep, from Nebraska, Nebraska, yep. became kind of the uh, flat. That flat Midwestern accent became the default accent in the United States. Did wow. it not? Not Ray Romano's accent here. I think that's... <laughs> Again, he sounds Kennedy's like accent. me. I, I... <laughs> I'm just going to go to Instagram. Yeah, I think they have... They do. They now have a web interface. So maybe that's the the way to, to do it. They encourage you, of course, to install it. But uh, they just had added a web interface for the first time. Well, now I got to do it. Yeah. No, you don't. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be huge on Instagram. No, kids you heard aren't here first. My, you know? my daughter told me that. She said, I want to be an Instagram it girl. I said, he's kind of... You don't really that know. sounds like something you don't want. To I never want to hear dirty, my daughter dirty, say I, that. I, <laughs> uh, when, once, they, once they hit 20, there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> uh, to start using Windows Essentials, click close. Is that going to uh, reboot? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just closed. You know, they really yeah, they could just put close on there. They don't really have to say it's just, okay. So we are, we're a little worried, and maybe you can help me, Paul, because we use yep. Skype. We're using Skype right now, and I'm a little worried because, mm -hmm. of course, there's Link. Yep. And yep. Uh, I have heard that this summer the transition mm -hmm. to Link is going to happen. Yep. Uh, should I be worried? Yes. No. Oh, damn. So um, I, I, I have been very worried about this. I've written a few negative uh, pieces about this. But one thing I've learned is that uh, the Skype guys, as it turns out, are up on on what's going on okay. and are aware of these problems. And this past week, they released a version of Skype that uh, clearly fixes a number of things because it fixed the issue I was having, which was that if I signed into Skype with my Messenger account, which, of course, is the, the actual transition that everyone's going to have to make, I would lose my contacts and I would appear to be offline to them. And the, that second bit is hard because there's no way for you to know that's happening. And so Mary Jo would write me an email and she'd say, hey, uh, I see that you're on Twitter because you're, you know, being your usual jackass self on Twitter. <laughs> Char charming um, everybody on Twitter. Uh, but you're not online, you know, and I and I am online. Or that kind of, or Raphael would do the same thing. He'd write me and say, hey, uh, I know you're there. And the way they know you're online is because of Skype? Twitter. Is because of Twitter. He doesn't show no, up online. But the way you're not showing, but yes. how do they know you're not it's online? It's because... Because when they look at their messenger, or Skype, I guess, depending on what, what right. they're using, it doesn't matter. Right. What, even though I'm signed in with a messenger network, I don't appear to be signed in. And so they, to them, I'm offline. So ah. they see me online doing other stuff, but they don't see me in messenger. Yep. And um, I, hearing this, I think it was late, maybe late last week, maybe last Friday, um, I downloaded that latest bill that I've been using it this past week. And... Um, it actually does appear to fix that problem. So that's huge. For me, at least. Wait a minute. Who has a GSM phone? Yeah, that's me. I don't know. <laughs> I haven't heard that. That's Edge. I haven't heard that in a long time, Paul. That's a Nexus 4. Uh, don't, we don't do LTE <laughs> on the Google Nexus. That's right. That's right. I forgot. So uh, I live in a dead zone, too. I, I So my, all my phones. Uh, Can I just dead. show you the most confusing thing that happens to me? <laughs> say. Sure. <laughs> So I I have uh, OneNote, the Send to OneNote installed, right? And so when yep. I hover over, as you know, with Windows 8, uh, and, and actually I think this was in 7 too, you hover over, you get a thumbnail of the minimized window. But when I yep. hover over the Send to OneNote window, I get a closable window with a closable window inside the closable window. No, no, no. So you actually, what you're seeing, believe it or not, <laughs> what you're seeing is consistent because that is the thumbnail of the window, and it just happens to be closer in size to the thumbnail because it is a small one. <laughs> right. So it's actually, it's 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 it conf correct. It confuses me every freaking time. It's like the Lord of the Rings, you know, <laughs> with the, the crazy things they did to make everybody look different sizes. That's right. It's, this is the yeah. Hobbit of Windows. Yeah. Okay. I don't like that little application thing, and I can't get it to not keep coming up. It drives okay, me crazy. Okay, thank you. I thought it was me. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, my God, I feel so much better. <laughs> I use You've OneNote every single day, and I hate that little thing. Yeah, I don't need that send to OneNote. If I want to put oh, it in OneNote, I'll put it in OneNote. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah, simple. So, um, we, we, I'm sorry, I interrupted your Skype. Uh... I think I, I can't claim that they've fixed everything um, because I, I, I had the issue I was having. But what I can tell you is that it was a very serious issue. Doesn't it fix it if you log into Skype via your Windows account? 
Well, that was what I was doing, and that's what I mean. In other words, Skype is a little convoluted because the, the application has evolved over time. I mean, obviously, it was originally just for Skype. Right. And they added uh, Facebook integration at some point. They added uh, Microsoft account integration. But they it's really weird how that works um, because you can have – you can actually be signed into Skype with all three of those account types. <laughs> but the way you do it is completely different. It, it's really strange. So if you, sign, if you sign in with your Skype account, you can add Facebook. But if you sign in with your Messenger account, you can have Facebook, Skype, and Facebook all at the same time. They're a little convoluted. So, But anyway, uh, when I was doing uh, – back in January when this was announced, uh, the, the, the new schedule – I immediately switched to Skype to see how this would go and had all kinds of problems. And I ended up having to reinstall Messenger. And this past weekend, um, <laughs> I installed the new version of Skype, hearing that they had fixed this stuff. And I turned off Messenger. And I have to say, so far, so good. So, uh, you know, this is one of those finger cross things. I can't, I, I, I you know, I was I, <laughs> kind of on the edge of the cliff there when it came to Skype. But um, the situation as of today, almost a week later, is, you know, so far, so good. So, this uh, shutdown is bearing down on us, but um, you know maybe they'll pull it off. We uh, we're fortunate because we have uh, one of our regulars. I don't know if he's in here today. Lou mm -hmm. works for uh, Microsoft, and I think he's in the Link division or knows the Link guys because they're working on something to help okay. us out with that, which would be yeah. nice. Oh, good. Yeah. yeah. As, as a user, I feel they have bungled the whole messenger skype thing just almost to comic proportions. <laughs> like like there, like there's a case where you can have messenger. And not have your accounts married and install Skype and it uninstalls Messenger and doesn't tell you. What? And then you go yes. back in and you try to find Messenger and it's gone. Oh, that's not I mean, oh, it's, just... it's, it's even worse than that. There's, if you, you could run Messenger and there's a little message in the bottom of the Messenger window that says, upgrade to the latest version, a of, new Messenger version of Messenger today. Messenger. You click on it and it loads Skype. <laughs> <laughs> and removes Messenger. And, and well, guess what? That, it, it deletes Windows Live Messenger. Yeah. I think there's a message here. Yep. <laughs> Yep. Skype is crazy. Messenger. That's crazy. Yeah, and there yeah. and there's ways that and that some of the contact stuff, the blocking doesn't act the same in Skype as it does in Messenger. So yep. you think yep. you've got somebody blocked in Messenger, but you log into Skype and they can get through. And it's an entertainment machine. Some of the <laughs> well, the good the good news I, I, it is it is bungled, but I, I think the good news is going to be once we get to the other side of this and once all the problems are kind of worked through, um, this is an example where Microsoft had too many products that did the same thing. Skype is obviously an awesome consumer brand, so it makes sense that that would be the brand they would use for their consumer products. They paid a lot of money for it. Yep. Um, and Link is a great product if you know for the few of us who have used it. Um, the sort of the corporate presence, messaging, video conferencing, you know, uh, meeting uh, and and sharing type app. Um, it is the corporate counterpart to Skype, and so they're going to integrate the back ends of these products. It's going to take longer than I'd hoped. Um, but I think starting this summer, you'll be able to federate uh, your contact lists and do audio, chat, and instant messaging between Skype and, and Link. And then the first half of next year, I think, is what they're looking at for video. So the video could be a while. So Okay, it's time to help Leo. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the new segment. It's a new segment. Okay. We theme music for So that. I, I can go to my what I think of as my start screen, because mm -hmm. that's what Microsoft calls it. And I type Skype in, uh, yeah. and you get two uh, of them. and I get no, I get one. Even oh, though I, I think so. That's the question. I thought I'd install the desktop. Maybe I haven't. So if I haven't the, the desktop, so this is obviously the Metro. If you had the desktop, it would you show would both. Two Skype. Okay, it would show both. And actually, in <laughs> Skype's case, it, it happens to say Skype for desktop. That would be nice. Okay. Yeah. So, so I, I thought I'd that, install so. it, but I haven't. So that's okay. Yeah. So good. Because so desktop Windows, Skype Windows is phone app. Uh, the Windows Phone app is confusingly named. Windows Phone when it's a Metro app, and it's named Windows Phone when it's a desktop app. Yeah, that's confusing. So if you have both of those, <laughs> the icons are almost identical. It's a little hard to tell. But here apart. I am. I'm typing Internet Explorer, and I only see one. Shouldn't I see two? No, that's that's by <laughs> default. So I know. I, the Leo. Internet Explorer is a, a special case. <laughs> I'm just messing with you now. It's, it's unbelievable. I'm just messing with you. At least I can be started on this. I, <laughs> this is, you know, I, I'm just I don't, messing with you now. I'm not someone who, I don't cry a lot, you know what I mean? <laughs> but writing Windows 8 Secrets and trying to explain the behavior of Internet Explorer in Windows 8, and by the way, it goes well beyond what you're just kind of yeah. hinting at, yeah. little tip yeah. of the iceberg. Yeah. Um, there's some real weirdness to it. So if you had like a Windows 7 PC and you set Firefox as your default browser, mm -hmm. upgraded to Windows 8, you would never see the Metro version of, of Internet Explorer. 
You would never even know it existed. It's not what? there. And if you have Windows 8 and you install Firefox or Chrome and you say, yes, I would like to set this other browser as my default browser, Metro version of Internet Explorer disappears. It's gone. It will not appear on your system unless IE is the default browser. It's crazy. And when I go to Skype.com, as I used to, to download uh, Windows Skype, mm -hmm. uh, it then says, well, go to the Windows Store and... Well, yeah. but that's just for the, that's the Metro version only. Uh, <laughs> so actually go back to Skype.com because actually I don't like the way they did this either. Okay, so uh, this just is... Just go to, go to Skype.com. Okay, so it says get Skype for Windows no, 8. Stop, uh, yeah, but this you can oh, scroll down. Oh, I want Windows it's Desktop. Cleverly hidden that's below not the Windows 8. I get oh. it. Right. Now again, I remember that they, they did say, and I suppose this is the living embodiment of it, that going forward that their primary focus is going to be on that Metro client. Boy, no kidding. I know. <laughs> so, yeah, and there, there are pros and cons to that. Uh, th by the way, we can't use the Metro client to do podcasts because it doesn't send HD video or right. widescreen video. Right. Although, actually, I'm noticing I'm not in. You're not why, but that's, don't no, worry about it. I don't know why that is. Yeah. But, you know, there are various issues with it. So those are things that will get fixed over time. But um, the good news for the Skype client on Windows 8, the, the Metro app, is that it's not kind of weighted down by the years of right. software it's development clean. that have occurred. Yeah, yeah. it's a much cleaner. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, the Dell deal. Um, Ross Perot is buying in. No, no, that's wrong. I <laughs> <laughs> Might as well. Listen, it could happen. <laughs> installing Skype. Installing Skype. I, did, I, well, should, did I make a mistake by also installing the <laughs> working? The typewriter app. Buffering. Buffering. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go back to one note. I'm sure it's here somewhere. Uh, so uh, now they've, we've got another uh, investor. So the, the last I heard was uh, oh, yeah. it, Michael Dell was trying to take it <laughs> private, and he had some uh, investors, green light investors, to, to to help him do that. But now, uh, is this a hostile uh, move to? What do you call it when like sharks are circling on, <laughs> around a guy who's in the water? The blood, it's chumming. Yeah, it's like it, there's a lot of opportunism that occurs yeah. here, right? So for example. Uh, PC makers that compete with Dell pretend that they might be interested in buying Dell. And what they get by doing that is two things. One, they get to look at Dell's books, right? Yeah. They can, oh, yeah. They yeah, they get to look at the books. Look at some internal stuff. Microsoft would never do anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to that. But um, <laughs> So now it's Carl Icahn. Actually, Ican. Microsoft is dumb enough to do that, but they would actually pay money to it. Mean, that's a separate right. story. But, yeah. <laughs> the, um, but they also get to drive up Dell's stock price, thus making the deal that Michael Dell is making to buy the company back look less good to shareholders, right. thus potentially scuttling the deal or making it more expensive for him. So either thus, it's a win-win, in other yes. words. So you, you got that going on. <laughs> you also get those kind of financial sharks, right? Like Carl Icahn is a good example, who I, I, I'm sure there are friendly, nice ways to describe this guy. But basically, you look at he looks at what's happening here and he thinks to himself, I could make money on this. Yeah. You know, and so he has all these other ideas. Um, maybe we could do a, a leverage recapitalization and you guys could uh, borrow billions of dollars and inc incur more debt, but then pay a special dividend to your shareholders, oh. who, by the way, I am secretly now one of because I just bought 6% of your company oh. while no one's looking. You know, and it's, it's kind of those underhanded scumbag you know, financial type deals. It's just, it's, it's, it's tough, but it has the same effect. These are, it's where, like these leverage buyout deals of the, of yeah, the 90s. It's literally, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, the, the Michael Dell deal basically valued the company at 13 point, I think $13 and some change. 1365. Uh, I can uh, says that substantially undervalues. Even though it's in fact, uh, almost a 40% premium over the average selling price of the stock for the 90 days before the, you know, whatever I, it, it's, because of the interest in this company, because of what's happening, the stock price could conceivably jump. Although, by the way, by the way, it hasn't actually jumped that much. It, it yeah, I believe nobody wants to go anywhere near this mess. <laughs> yeah, it is kind of a well. There are people who do want to go near it, and there, there are, of course, large in, in, uh, institutional investors who own big chunks of Dell that are interested in getting the best possible deal as well. Uh, the Dell, uh, there's a special committee uh, committee that the Dell uh, board of directors created to look into the you know this deal and and represent the shareholders 
And they say they've looked at all kinds of things. They looked at what ICANN is looking at. They've looked at breaking up the company. You know, maybe we break it off into separate companies. And maybe Michael Dell runs one of those companies. And what they're saying is that this deal that they've reached, they feel is in the best interests uh, of yeah, the shareholders. Yeah, too bad but, because ICANN's saying there's going to be years of litigation if you yep, don't I, go I, along I, with my little plan here. Yeah, so. That's a very Bond villain. <laughs> yes. He is. He, that's exactly what he is. He's a Bond villain. So, um I think that what's going to happen is it's going to be much more expensive for Dell to go private. And I think it's also now in doubt that this can even happen. I think it's going to be a mess, you know, because he's, of guys. He's stopped it. He says yeah. uh, he proposed that uh, if the proxy vote to go private fails, the company <laughs> pays shareholders a special thank you bonus of $9 yeah. a share, which pretty much guarantees it's going to fail, right? But that requires them to <laughs> huge debt. Huge yeah, debt. I believe it's another two two billion dollars in debt they would yeah. have to take on. You know, um, and by the way, I can says, and by the way, I'll lend you five and a quarter billion. <laughs> yeah, if you at a good it. interest rate. At a nice, yeah. a nice it's an interest offer rate. You can't refuse. Did he say that? Because <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of like that. And <sighs> didn't he do something similar to this with the Yahoo deal with Microsoft? <clears throat> Hasn't he gotten yep. gotten in here and screwed some of these up before? He's an amazing fella. But none of, this is not illegal. This is just good business. And it's the truth illegal. is Michael Dell just, and the board should probably have looked down the road a little bit and, and realized that they were vulnerable to this kind of scumbaggery. Well, uh, obviously, uh, Dell's been vulnerable for some time, I think. Right. I think that's the issue. You know, Dell, uh, Dell was a big takeover target. You know, the way their stock was so low, it was conceivable that someone could right. buy them up at some reduced price. And I think that's part of the impetus for do what they're doing as well, right? right? Uh, protecting themselves from that. So he has six percent, yep. Which is gonna, which is a significant stake yes. now. Yes, and he probably just kind of. He's already met with the the board of directors from Dell as well, and this yeah. is the, the type of thing you know. You get a phone call. It's like, hey, by the way, I just bought a bunch of your company. What are you guys doing tomorrow? Oh, you're meeting with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, and it's just I don't know. I, I I realize this is how the world works, but it's amazing, isn't it? Uh, it is. Know. Yeah. Yep. We just sit here and 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 we watch this happen, and it just feels like how could this? It's just so apparently wrong. Um, but and every day that goes by, you know, unfortunately for Dell, you know, who was formerly the number one PC maker in the world and is now number three or four, depending on how you look at it. Um, you know, things go downhill from here. It's it's, it's too bad. It is yeah. too bad. It's really yep. too bad. Um. Should I use my Microsoft account, my Facebook account, or my Skype account to log in? Oh, Leo. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it will let me log in. I think if I use my Skype account, it says, no, no, you've too late. You've tied it to Microsoft. But I wonder what happens with my Facebook account. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think if you logged in with your Facebook account, it would, it would be account. Facebook chat is what you would get. Yeah. It would basically be Skype operating as Facebook chat. Right. Right. But so. you don't have to log in as a Facebook account to get... Facebook chat through Skype. You could get that through your Skype account. You can get it through your Microsoft account. Yeah, I'm going to log in through Microsoft. <laughs> I've, 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 I've given up on this one. And But it does seem like there are compelling reasons to have uh, Skype on the desktop as well as the Metro client. That's the problem right now, right? Is yes, okay, we, we want to all go Metro, but right now there's still advantages to having a desktop. Yep. And I, yeah. it's like the problem I've got with my mom, the two Internet Explorers. You know, this Internet Explorer does this, but if you want right. to do the other thing, go to the other Internet Explorer. Right. Right. Yeah. Sure. And in other news, I'm sorry, I'm just... I'm, we're going to look back on these days and we're going to laugh. We'll <laughs> laugh. It didn't Hopefully hurt so much now. Hopefully not while using Android devices, but, you know, whatever. I mean, things are going to change one way or the other, so... IDC says PC business slowdown continues... This one is interesting to me because when I when I caught wind of this story, universally, the stories I saw, the headlines were along the lines of PC industry or, you know, to continue its slump in 2013, right. you know, that kind of thing. And when I looked at what IDC said, that is, in fact, not the claim. <laughs> According to IDC, the, the, the doldrums, you know, the drop off in sales growth uh, in the PC industry that occurred in late 2012 is going to continue into the first quarter or two of 2013 and then it's going to pick up again huh. and uh they actually expect that pc sales are going to grow year over year um to the point and let me look this up i think they said in 2017 uh that pc makers will sell 382 million pcs which is over 30 million more than they're going to sell this year so 
this was a, a kind of a temporary little kind of blip, according to IDC again, you know. Um, but, you know, everyone is so quick to write the, the PC uh, obituary, you know. <laughs> like, I mean, it's kind of crazy because it's obviously a very mature market. It's been around for 30 years or whatever. They sell 350 million-ish computers a year. Um, it, it's not unreasonable for that market to be flat from kind of a sales pers or growth perspective, rather. And, uh, and everyone talks about tablets. But, you know, the truth is tablet sales, as much as they're growing, and of course they're growing a lot because it's a new market, are still not going to outpace PC sales for the foreseeable future. Um, overall, uh, PC or, uh, tablet sales in 2016, according to the same company, IDC, will be 261 million units uh, one year before 2017, which is when PCs will sell 382 million units. So, I, I, I mean, to me, I, I don't understand what's the, what's the fear here exactly. I mean, it seems like tablets are a great new market. You know, I mean, so... The, the pie is um, getting bigger. People are using yeah. tablets for stuff they weren't using computers for before. So, I mean, there's, there's room for both. Right. right. Like your mom. I mean, so... Does she have well, a tablet? Well, no, but we'll get her she one. She really ought to have one. The hilarity that will come from that. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. I'm in. Let's do it. <clears throat> this is I think she'll free. like it. I think, she, frankly, moms, older yeah. moms, not all moms, but old, but I think people who are a little not computer literate, let's put it that way, uh, tablets are a good sure. choice, right? Yeah. 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 I mean, she's got a Kindle. She's got all that. Oh, she's Put a couple pictures of the grandkids on there, and she'd be, uh, uh, she'd be fine. Uh, see? My mom loves her iPad. Not going to send her a Windows RT, though. <laughs> no. No. Surface <laughs> not right for her. Uh, oh, there's one more little thing, and then we're going to get to our tips and picks. Do you want to do a beer pick, anybody? <laughs> Bueller? Anybody? <laughs> no, really, I Mary feel like Jo I should do this. one for Mary Jo. Yeah. Find a beer, drink it. I, I actually had a crazy... I mentioned this on the show earlier. I did do... I had kind of a crazy beer last night. Let me find it. You guys, just save it. We don't, you don't have to do it now. Yep. Facebook has redesigned its news feed. I don't know if this is something... For this show or not, but why not? Let's talk about it. You like it? <laughs> so it actually happened while I was traveling up here, so I haven't had a chance to play with it yet, but well, I read some of the news. And The way that Facebook works is they announce something and then no one can have it. So <laughs> I, don't I don't know if have I have it. it. I can't log in. I have to go get my phone <laughs> to do my security code. I apparently haven't used Facebook. But, here, but here's why I think this is relevant. Let me um, go get my phone. Keep talking. <laughs> when, when browsers first came out, people maintained, uh, like, favorites lists, you know? And some people still do, obviously. Fav you were talking about your mom and favorites and how favorites aren't in um, Internet Explorer and Metro and yep. uh, how weird that is and all that kind of stuff. And um, I was I was one of those people who really overthought things, and I actually had, like, a website that just had all the links that I used to go to arranged in some kind of a grid, and, you know, I did that kind of thing for a while. Um, but, you know, as browsers evolved, you know, things changed. But I think a lot of normal people... Or like a homepage would use something like yahoo.com or msn.com, which was kind of the default. And uh, what Facebook was saying with their timeline is that Facebook, the, the default view in Facebook, which is that timeline view, is like the world's homepage. It's, it's the first thing that people see in the morning when they get up, and it's what they leave on all day long. It's actually, if you want to put it in a different way, it's like Outlook is for like a knowledge worker, you know, that... There are people who run their entire lives through Outlook, and uh, they they love it so much they use it at home. You know, they use Outlook. They they just Outlook people. Yeah. And and that Facebook satisfies that need for the common man. <laughs> you know that it's like the the normal person's kind of homepage. And I I I'm not going to do it, but I I actually buy that. Like I think that that's reasonable. It's uh, like AOL used to be like this. You know, Yahoo is a good you know another example. Yeah, it's and, the new homepage for the world. And didn't didn't Zuckerberg say something about how the new Facebook uh, timeline was going to be like, you know, your newspaper? It was going to be just yeah. what was going on. That was kind of the, the thing they were going for. I can't That's show it. That's actually what it needs to be because... Uh, I, I don't get I don't have it yet. Yeah, I don't think I have You know, it. Facebook could be uh, a feed that combines stuff about the people you know with the stuff that you care about, right? It could be yep. the Celtics score, the you know, latest tech story, the whatever, you know, it doesn't have to be. And, and it sounds like they've, they've added some new things to the timeline. One of my frustrations was 
And, and so you, you miss part of the evolution. Uh, Facebook announces something, nobody can get it. Then it comes out and everybody complains about it. Right. It. Uh, but, <laughs> besides, it but after they've changed that a couple times, things like they always want to uh, default my timeline view to uh, the most popular things as opposed right. to the most recent things. Right. And I so hate I, that. Oh, me too. In oh. fact, I just saw a study that said that you only see one third of all the things that... <laughs> That's the other thing. That, that, yeah. tri that drives me crazy. And yep. I don't like that they do that. Yep. So I think those are and things... And they that, decide and they don't tell you how they decide. Yep. I know. And I think I they've like addressed that. that now. So there's going to be an all friends view. Oh, good. There's going to be a my likes view. Do you have it, uh, Alex? He's logging in. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, not, neither Leo or I are popular. So, by the way, I just Facebook. learned something excellent on Facebook, like I do every day. <laughs> and uh, this day's lesson is commas save lives. <laughs> and there's two sentences. The first one says, let's eat, comma, grandma. And the second one says, let's, <laughs> let's eat, eat, grandma. grandma. Let's eat, grandma. <laughs> eat, shoots, and leaves. Yep. Yeah. I like yeah. commas. Yep. yep. Comma blunder. The, the Harvard comma. The or the, ha have it comma. <laughs> that's the one I use. Serial yep. comma. Oh, uh, here's a link. In our chat room has a, uh, a link to a... Uh, it's going to be a Rick roll. No, the chat room doesn't do Rick rolls. What did, now, wait a minute. I already. <laughs> oh, my God. There we go. There we go. From this StarTech phone. Yeah. So, and they've also taken that left side, uh, that left pane out. Let me let me just do this real quickly. You Facebook, bring it up so we can see it. Facebook.com slash about slash news feed. Oh, no, this is, okay. So I, haven't is typed, I haven't typed it. Oh, new feed is not the same as news feed. Wait slash RZ7W. <laughs> I haven't yeah. done this in a long time. Bang, Goodbye, clutter. Hello. Carrots. Hello, bright, beautiful stories. Search. For, oh, this is, yeah, okay. It is pretty. The pictures are big. This is what Google's yeah, been so, doing with Google Plus, too. Yeah, so making I think, those pictures big. Well, and that was something they mentioned on uh, Tech News Today was that Facebook has the people Google yep. Plus had the interface, but nobody right. was there. Right. And so th this was a great uh, cho chance for Facebook to jump in and get the interface right before everybody left and went to Google so Plus. I, oh, yeah, that's just, a real issue. If I could just slightly clarify what you said about Google Plus. <laughs> nobody important is there. No, nobody's leaving Facebook for Google Plus. Can we be clear about this? Yeah. Uh, and in fact, if well, if they were, it would have happened by now. I mean, Google has thrown every... Uh, I think this looks nice. I this yeah. is, You know what? This does look a little Google Plus-y, though, doesn't it? It Dang. Yeah, I have no idea because I'm a normal person and I use Facebook. <laughs> I like it. I want it. And then I'll complain about yeah, it. Yeah, and, that, and that's yeah. important. That's an important part of the, yeah. the process. <laughs> yeah. It looks like an OS a little bit, right? With the icons on the left, the way it's it's done. It I like really, it. It's yep. to make it's really is to make you want to live in it. I think that as you said, I do want to live in it, Leo. How do I move to this place? Can we put it? a dome over it. Facebook's yeah. news feed. I'm soaking in it. <laughs> We're gonna take a break and come back with some beer. After all that, yeah. I need some beer. And I have a hard time pronouncing this one, too. Oh, good. We'll all I try. Send, can I send you a link for this somehow? Yeah. 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 Put it in the one note. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to, no, I mean, I'm going to put it in one note. And then I won't get it. And then, no. And then you have to refresh the page. Oh, refreshing the page. There's the ticket. That's just crazy enough to work. That, uh, <laughs> we can work. do this. Try anything once. Audible.com, the greatest bookstore. Do you do audiobooks, uh, Todd? I, I don't. You I got to. Well, I, I work from home. My commute is about. 13 steps. You know, that's a common um, misconception. That, that <laughs> no, you it need really a is long, steps, No, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Everybody says it's not really. <laughs> it's, you know, uh, that you need a long commute to use uh, audible.com. It's Actually, I right. used to have a long commute. That's how I got into it. And you're right. That's yep. the kind of the natural use of it. When I was uh, driving to San Francisco every day for tech TV, you know, that'd be a couple, of, couple three hours every day in the car. And Audible was a lifesaver. It's what kept me from strangling more than a few drivers in front of me which is good yeah road rage is not a good thing yeah, audible is the cure idea. for road rage audiobooks that you just you get so engrossed and so gripped by that sometimes you keep going like you get home and you wait in the driveway for half an hour while you're finishing the chapter that's not a bad thing they're so so good but even if you don't commute if you do you work out an hour a day at the stairmaster <laughs> I know. I, I'm looking at you. And I'm I thinking, think this no, speaks you. for itself as to whether I work out or not. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, never mind. You, it's not for you. Do you walk the dog? Do you do you, do you make the do you vacuum the carpet? Anytime yep. you could be holding a book, but you can't because your hands are busy. Audible is a great choice for you. Woodworking in the garage. I can think of a lot of times you might want to gardening, pulling yep. weeds, whittling. Yeah. Do you whittle? Uh, I no, love but to I would whittle. start if I could yeah. take advantage. You of know, Audible. I took up whittling. For, because of Audible.com. <laughs> you've oh convinced me. I'm, what, <laughs> what, what is going on here? 
Audible.com. Hey, why don't you take two seconds off to like cut and paste something? And, and all of a sudden we're talking about whittling. Back and you're talking about whittling. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Making, uh, Go to yeah. audible.com slash windows and you can try it free right now. You get uh, the uh, you'll be signed up for the gold account. That's a book a month. And uh, but but the nice thing about the book a month is uh, it's free for the first month, so you can download a book, take it out. Uh, read it, and uh, and even if you uh, decide you don't like Audible, cancel before the month's up. You'll pay nothing, but that book is yours forever. I think you're going to want to keep it. I'm really doing it. Do. You've convinced me. You've yeah, won me over. It. I will at least try. They've got mysteries, thrillers. What kind of books do you like to read, Todd? What do well, you? Well, so right now I'm reading Paul's uh, pick from a couple of weeks ago that uh, Resolve and Fortitude. Oh, see, so you're listening to the show and reading them in like physical or Kindle form. Kindle form, yeah. 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 Oh, you're going to like this. That is completely unacceptable. <laughs> well, but what you will like is many books, and they'll note them on, when you look at Audible, they'll say, uh, many books uh, automatically interface with the Kindle version. Oh, and so get out. It, Yeah, so you could pick it up uh, where you left off, either in audio or uh, reading. You're making that up. They'll say Kindle Whisper Sync compatible. So yep. uh, that is one of the nice things about Audible. Uh, yeah. I'm really a big fan. I want you to try it right now. Go to audible.com. Recommended by Todd's mom. <laughs> audible.com slash <laughs> windows. No, I don't know. She may not know about it, but she ought to. She will know. My be, mom, you know what my mom. could be a new segment on this show, actually. Recommended by Todd's mom. Todd's mom <laughs> says, uh, hello, Mrs. Why, Todd. Todd Lupner. That's what I'm thinking of. What? From the Saturday Night Live. Hello, oh. Mrs. Loop. <laughs> and then... Like a wet noodle, Todd. Um, <laughs> she even had a flat Iowa accent. Uh, anyway, I don't know where I got that from. So uh, if you so if you want to try audible.com, audible.com slash windows. Do give it a try. Uh, and I think you will uh, like it. My mom listens like crazy. Um, she just she loves her Kindle. She still uses it, but she is just a big fan. Yep, I'm doing it. I'm signing up. Are you? Good. I'm going to do it. Well, not right now. I, I get this thing going on, but after this. Download Windows Live Essentials. You should do it right now. That's what Leo would do. <laughs> <laughs> and if it says reboot, Just, go right ahead. Yep. Exactly. Yep. Uh, I wonder if I could find a Mrs. Looper. Looper uh, Todd and Lisa. Yeah. Remember Todd and Lisa? They were the nerds on Saturday Night Live. It was uh, Bill Murray and... Uh, I wonder if I can get this to work. Yeah. Oh, I guess uh, apparently no flash support either. Uh, <laughs> just get your, you just get you in trouble. <laughs> just get you in trouble. There's no reason really you should. Hello, Mrs. Loopner. Hello, Todd. Oh, I really want to find. I want to play this. <laughs> oh well. Oh Meanwhile, <laughs> while uh, Leo's installing Flash, <laughs> uh, why don't why don't we get our tip of the week from Mr. Paul Thorant? Jane Curtin was all the mom. Alrighty. Yep. <clears throat> Gilda Radner, Bill Murray, Jane Curtin. That should be all you need to know. The, the immortals. Go ahead, Paul. That is out. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> sorry. I write a lot of tips every week, but I thought this one was kind of cool. Um, and it's it's nicely in keeping with the way that Windows Phone works. So, you know, when we talk about apps like we did earlier about Instagram and all that kind of stuff, um, obviously the advantage on the iPhone is individual number of apps and then the actual apps themselves. You know, there are certain apps that people love to have, but... The, the sort of dumbness of that system is that it's that mole, you know, whack-a-mole approach where um, if you want to do something like, I want to take a picture, uh, I, I want to use Instagram, I want to do one of those, I want to take a picture, apply a crazy effect to it, and share it on Facebook or something. Um, you need to think as the user, well, how am I going to accomplish that? You know, uh, Instagram, okay, so where's Instagram in my many home screens and folders? You know, you got to go hunt for the thing and and the thing I've always liked about uh, Windows Phone is that it has a more integrated approach. And so, yes, you can and maybe should even download apps for things like Twitter and Facebook. But those things are integrated right into the operating system and they surface at all, all the places you would want them to. So if you go into the People Hub, you can find out about your friend's uh, activities and social networks. You know, you don't have to go to individual apps. And so in Windows Phone 8, they've, ex they've extended this capability to the camera. And so... There's a new class of apps called lenses or lens apps that extend the camera app. And you can run them as individual apps. I mean, in, in conceivably, if Instagram ever appears, it could be done as a lens app. And so you could run ah. it as a standalone app. You could go find it and run yeah. it. Or you could just do the natural thing, which is I want to take a picture. So you hit the camera button, and then there's a button that will bring up all of the lens apps right from within the ah. camera viewfinder. It's integrated right in there. And, I, you know, again, I, I, you know, if you want to, <clears throat> you know, get picky about it, you could say, well, there's still standalone apps and you can still run them separately and all that kind of stuff. You can, true, 
But I, I think that the really cool bit here is just that integration piece that, you know, in, in Windows Phone, you don't have to think about the app. You think about the thing you're doing. You know, I want to catch up with friends. I want to look at pictures that other people have shared. I want to take a picture. You know, ultimately, that's the way I think most people think. You know, not I need to run Instagram. Where is Instagram in my phone? You know, I need to take a picture. And uh, I just think it's a great uh, way to do it. And there are some really cool apps. I, I highlighted some in that article around... Um, you know, panoramic photos, especially. Um, there's some really cool augmented reality apps like the Nokia Le uh, City Lens and Bing Vision that uh, let you interact with the world through the camera viewfinder in ways that are really unique. Um, and I just think, that, you know, again, the integration piece is the really cool thing. So if you do have a Windows phone, um, you can actually find lens apps directly from the camera. <laughs> so you, you go into uh, the camera viewfinder, you hit the lenses button, and then in addition to all the lenses that you already have installed, there's a link right there called, uh, you know, uh, something like Find More Lenses. And it will bring you to that part of Windows Phone Store uh, where you can find them all. So kind of a cool thing to do if you have Windows Phone. Very neat. And if you don't, you can suck it. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't, this means nothing. And you can ignore what we've just said. Lenses. That's, but what's neat, and, you know, this was, uh, I mentioned this before, but when we had a, uh, Hans-Peter Brodmo from uh, Nokia on, that's what he was saying was that it's not going to be about the camera so much anymore. It's going to be about uh, f uh, calculations. It's going to be processing mm -hmm. is where yeah. the future of photography lies. You know, because sure. we've kind of gotten to that point where we've got great images, especially yeah. if you have like a Lumia. Yep. Um, yeah. And now it's going to be about what you, can you do with those. So these, this this plug-in uh, lenses. Photos, by the way, Photosynth, we talked, that was, I think that was the from last week, yeah. is a lens app. And so right. again, oh, that's you, can think photo, you can think Photosynth, but ah. you know, I think, again, I think most people think, oh, I want to take a picture of this. I want to capture it, you know? And then those things are available right there when you're using the camera. And I think that's the cool, the cool part of that. Our software pick of the week. It's called Modern Mix. This is Ooh. a dream come true for me um, because it allows you to run Metro apps in floating windows on the <laughs> Windows desktop. Oh, that's great. <laughs> yeah. Now, if you have a tablet device, that's going to really actually, confuse I, me. I actually think that running Metro <laughs> apps full screen makes plenty of sense. But when you're using a desktop yeah. computer, like I am with a 27 inch screen, or my traditional Ultrabook with a that has a well, actually in this case a 15 inch screen, which isn't all that traditional, but it's a a big screen device. Or Tog's Tog's Todd apparently has something that was built in East Germany in the 1970s <laughs> over there. Whatever that is. It's you know, if you were to run, it's tough. <laughs> it's a Dell. If you were to run Windows 8 on that, um, <laughs> running like a Skype app full screen doesn't make a lot of sense. It looks like he's running Vista. I'm not running. But this okay. is Windows 7. Oh, Windows yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. He, I noticed because he's, so, he's got that start menu thing. That, that, that confusing ball anymore. in the corner where yeah. everything I want to do is at. Yeah, yeah, we don't need that anymore. <laughs> it's right we still have like muscle we, it, windows 8 was designed with that muscle memory in, in mind every right? time i go to the desktop my mouse just like goes to the lower left corner just boom yeah it's like well oh, no. I'm, I'm not gonna make it a pick but the company that makes modern mix which is Stardock, Stardock does great also stuff. makes something called start eight which puts a start button back in windows 8 yeah and i think honestly between uh start eight and modern mix you've got about 95 percent of the complaints about windows 8 sewn up i mean i think the only major one after that is returning uh, arrow, you know, the arrow. No, process. I can do uh, That's okay. I, I won't go that far. No, I far. prefer it that way myself, too. Yeah. I, I like it better without arrow, yeah. but, you know, that's the, the complaints that some people Could have. Could do it if you want. So, some, some things I understand, you know, uh, I, I've i tried to caution people to learn the new stuff because it is the future. But I, the reason I think Modern Mix is a more acceptable utility to install than, say, something like Start 8 is that it doesn't change... The fact that you you know it, it actually allows you to use metro apps right. which you might not otherwise do. No, I kind of like it, this. And you uh, you've yeah. said you live in the desktop. I do. So having the metro apps, Windows especially 8, on a twenty seven inch screen, that just makes sense. Yeah. And the cool thing about this app is, in addition to running these things in Windows, and you can toggle them back and forth. It's really nice the way they do it. Um, you can size them the way you want it. And so some apps have those kind of cool snap uh, experiences where they're kind of tall and thin. You could move something up into the corner, make it small. <clears throat> and when you close it and then run it again, it actually remembers both the size and the position of the window the way it was. So those apps will always be arranged the way you want them, which let's face it, we're, for people who are running stuff on the desktop and want multiple open windows, um, this is the type of thing we're kind of retentive about. So uh, I, I'm, I'm really excited about this one. Um, 
Yeah, and which may surprise some people because I've I've always tried to again caution that we should learn the new way of doing things and all that. But I don't really feel like this subverts anything other than that which should never have been in the first place, which is you know not giving you the option to do this. Um, and you know maybe the desktop goes away in the future, but it's here now, and and I need to use it. So right. this actually has already caused me to use uh, these apps more than I would have otherwise. Thirty day free trial, five dollars. Stardock. Yeah. Dot com. Yeah. Um, by the way, we didn't mention your Audible pick. That's okay. I'll save it for next time. But It's good. I've you, been reading. In fact, I'm on the second yeah, volume of I, it now. I am. I, I love a friend it. of mine recommended this book to me. Uh, I guess I'll just talk about it now. <laughs> so, We're talking about uh, the name of year, the wind, Patrick Rothfuss. Yeah. No, Trey I mean, Radcliffe it, told me, if you don't like this book, you can't be my friend. And I think so, he meant it. <laughs> I, I, I grew up on uh, science fiction and fantasy writing and Tolkien and Asimov and all of the greats. And I, I find as an adult that I don't like much science fiction and fantasy at all. Mm. Uh, as, and I had a really hard time believing that Game of Thrones was going to be any good. You know? Oh, it's so good. And yes. uh, I know oh. it, it is. It's great. It starts back up this month I on know, HBO. Yeah. yeah. So uh, Name of the Wind, which is uh, by Patrick Rothfuss, the first book of uh, I think what's going to be a trilogy, is a book that a friend of mine who I grew up with and has been pushing on me for uh, over a year now, probably a year and a half or whatever. And uh, again, I just... Fantasy, I don't know. It just doesn't seem like it's going to be any good. And uh, for whatever reason, I recently uh, picked it up and um, keep it is listening because I'm now in the second volume. Uh, they they have Audible does not. I don't think two. he's finished writing it's, the third volume. So. No, I think it's just the two. Is that yeah? Right? yeah. Um, but as you go, here's my thesis. Yeah. Uh, and I have to talk to Patrick about this. And he's been on okay. some, several of our shows, including NSFW. Um, I think he said I'm going to write a Harry Potter for grownups. Okay. And just keep I've listening. Big, I've, I've always had a big problem with Harry Potter, so that's uh, well, good. It's terrible. But, well, it's just, it's, yeah, it's, it's terrible. But I think I finally figured this out. It's Harry Potter for the grownups. You've got, uh, well, anyway. Just Harry keep... Potter's tough for me. Here's why Harry Potter's tough. Why? I've always been a big reader. I think people should read. I, I have to say the one benefit of Harry, Harry Potter is it's caused people who right. normally don't read to read. Yep. And I got I to gotta give her credit for that. But I also feel that it's like a blatant ripoff of at least 100 different things right. that came before it. And it's childish and stupid. Well, and it's a kid's book, you know. I, I know. I know. So okay. it's one of those, you know. <laughs> but it gets worse like, and worse by the time you get to I the know. seventh volume. And I, had, I read them all out loud to my kids. And it was fun to read them. And I like the characters. And the first couple are really actually pretty good. But it just gets worse and worse. <laughs> and it's because she doesn't have a... Game books are like that, too. They go... Yeah, you know, yeah. Cliff. But uh, but I think you'll see that the Rothfuss world is very complete. Anyway, it's called The Name of the Wind. Uh, book it is amazing. I'm, I'm, it's much like Game, uh, Game of Thrones. It's not as, uh, you know, maybe gritty and dark and whatnot, but it's, um, it's it is, it, he has created a believable world. Yeah. And I, I have to say, I, I honestly, I'm at the point in my life I didn't think I'd ever have to ever be able to say that about a fantasy book. I'd never book, have to read a fantasy book ever I, again. But now No, I'm it's not. a good one. This is a really good one. And the, and the Audible version is great. I, I, oh, he's so, Nick Podol is a great reader. Yeah. Yeah, I, I have to say, some people are going to maybe not agree with this because he does the voices and stuff. And I think so, that oh, turns I like some people. That. I, right, I, I do too. Yeah. I think some people Don't may like not it. like, but great book. And your beer is from Unibrow, which is yes. an interesting uh, place. <laughs> I I had one, but then I had it removed. Yes, they make great beer, by the way. <laughs> uh, it's probably Unibrow. Yes. Is it French? Uh, French Canadian. Ah. They're in Quebec. Quebec. And in fact, let me. Uh, I'm, I'm forgetting the my the the beer I drink. Most frequently from them is Le Fin du Monde, which is actually behind me. Oh, That's it's the from Le, Le, Le Fin du Monde people. Okay, <clears throat> right. So they make an apple beer uh, that I w w we were in Whole Foods the other night. And I bought some um, uh, Delirium Tremens, which is my favorite oh, beer. Wonderful uh, beer. But yeah. they had some of the apple beer from these guys, which I don't see that frequently. So, is it a I beer actually, or is it like a cider? No, it's a beer. It's an it's apple. It's brewed beer. with apple must to give yeah. it an appley kind of. Uh, yeah, no, it's apple. It's huh. apple beer. There's no doubt about it. Huh. It's called Ephemer Apple. So, you know, it, it, there are bad beers in the world, right? The, oh, a God, lot yes. of little craft breweries that make like a blueberry beer or a <laughs> strawberry beer or something. Yeah, and it's like yeah. this gross yeah, don't do syrup that. crap. Yeah. You know, this is actually, this is, I like this one. I mean, I, I really, again, not I'll for everybody necessarily, it. but it's a good one. I'm a big cider fan. I love ciders. Yeah. No, it's a, this is definitely a beer. Yeah. Um, yeah. Not a cider, but cool. It's good. Paul Therat, uh, you've ably filled in on the beer selection portion. Would you like to do a <laughs> well, code I name? I always or? knew I could do it. <laughs> <laughs> yes! 
Hey, Todd, it's been great having you, Todd. Uh, Clint, Thanks. Uh, do you want to? What do you want to plug? Uh, your website, ToddClint.com. Yeah. Uh, so if you're if you're a SharePoint uh, person, uh, you can go to ToddClint.com. Uh, slash blog for my SharePoint blog. I also do a little uh, a little SharePoint show every Monday nights, uh, 8.30 Central, 6.30 Pacific, uh, where I talk about SharePoint stuff and, and all that, so you can catch that uh, also. Awesome. For the, for the code name pick of the week, we could use Tahoe, which was SharePoint's code name. Oh, neat. When the, uh, That's good. Yeah, when it was... That's good. And thank you for calling them netcasts. Yeah, I got I got that from you. <laughs> yeah, I know you did. Yeah. <laughs> I can tell. I have not Nobody heard else calls before. it netcasts. Yep. yep. <laughs> Mary Jo will be back next week, but Todd's been great to have thanks, you filling in as long as you're me. in town for the yep. SharePoint conference and uh, yep. listen to his show. Listen to this show. We do it at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern time on Thursdays. That's 1900 UTC on twit.tv. And it's fun to watch live. You can bitch and moan about me about being late, things like that. It's always great. <laughs> Love that. Uh, but if you can't watch it live, don't worry. On-demand version is available uh, anytime at twit.tv slash WW or wherever better netcasts are aggregated and delivered via the interwebs. And uh, it's almost 4 o'clock, Paul, so it would be a good time for you to do Windows Weekly. Yeah. Are we, yeah, are we yeah. supposed to start? <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Paul Therott. Thank you, Ty Clint. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time on Windows Weekly.